Welcome to the broadcast. We are on episode 158 of the Revival Lifestyle Podcast. Tonight's going to be a powerful night. We decided not to just have a regular interview tonight. We're going to have a night of prayer. I think we need to do these more often. And oftentimes we get caught up teaching, teaching, teaching. It's like talking, talking, talking. And we don't actually have a time where we pray. I see a lot of YouTubers online. And I'm not trying to throw shade to start the stream here, but I never see them pray. So I'm like, man, I want I want to be a, a community. I want to be a ministry. I want to be a people that are people of prayer, a people of worship, engaging with God in prayer. And I know many of you watching this, you don't know how to pray. And I didn't know how to pray when I got saved. The first thing I told God was, I don't know how to pray. How are you going to use me? And God said, I'll teach you to pray. So we're going to pray with you. I, this is an engaging stream where we want you to pray as well. I have my good friend here with me. Let me put him on camera here. Jared, Hello, what is everyone. up, bro? He's I'm back. back. You could, listen, guys, if you don't do good on episode one, you usually don't make it back, but he's <laughs> back. So, no, it's it's awesome to have you back on here. It's going to be an amazing night. You're a prayer warrior, and I'm excited to pray with you and just see what God has. We're just going to flow, guys. We don't yeah. have all this stuff planned, like any elaborate teachings planned. We just want the Holy Spirit to do what he wants to do, and we really want to give the Holy Spirit a place and room to do what he wants to do. That's heal, that's deliver, that's save. And so tonight... I'm going to prophesy this. People will get healed. Come people on. will get delivered. Yes. People will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Some of you that have never prayed in tongues before are going Shut to pray in tongues up. tonight. I believe prodigals are going to come home. Marriages are going to be restored. Yes. Every supernatural thing, and we're just jumping right in, that will happen in your life happens in the place of prayer. Nothing supernatural is going to happen in your life outside of the place of prayer. That's right. And one of the most important principles and concepts in the Bible is communing with God, mm. that we have this ability, Jared, to communicate with the God of the universe. And this is something that we don't utilize, we rarely do, we rarely talk about, and this is the most important thing. Last night we were at the Domino Revival and we were talking mm. to people that were saying, I'm struggling with this, this, this. And my question to people that are struggling always is, what does your prayer life look like? And oftentimes, you're gonna see the people, some of you need to tweet this, that struggle the most pray the least. Uh -oh. The people that struggle the most are the ones that pray the least. Hashtag. And I would say, when you start praying, a thousand other issues will be solved if you have a prayer life. That's so right. tonight, we're gonna pray, it's gonna be good. How, what did you think of the Domino Revival? Do you wanna say anything about it last night? Because It was so powerful, I, I thought the whole concept of showing what has currently happened, because Come all on. the videos that are always out are, is what God yes, did in the past. Yes. So to have something that's current, a cr um, and just the heart behind it, and the best part was the end. Yes, when we had an a, a full blown altar call uh, in a movie theater. In a movie theater, and people were getting saved, people were getting healed, people were getting delivered. It was powerful. I'm like, boy, this yeah, this shouldn't end. It's hard to put in words whenever you see thousands of theaters across America. Tens of thousands of people going, and then an altar call breakout in secular theaters. We're in one theater yeah. next door. I think it was some horror movie. I heard it screaming <laughs> yeah. and people running around killing each other. They were the getting delivered. <laughs> yeah, and then the next theater. So one theater, murder happening, horror, all that. But then our theater, deliverance is happening. Revival's happening. People are being yeah. restored. Like, I couldn't imagine the people next door to us in the theater they probably would have never thought that one theater over, people are getting prayer, miracles are happening, deliverances are happening. And one of the things, actually, I feel the Holy Spirit tonight wants us to, to pray about is canceling suicide. Yes. This is something that isn't talked about. One of the guys in the movie said, suicide is the most preventable, preventative, pre preventable, there yes. it is, cause of it. death in America. That's right. And all you do to prevent it is you talk about it. And so some of you in the chat, I, I didn't plan this, but I feel like the Holy Spirit's telling me right now, that have planned your suicide, have thought about suicide, have mm. wanted to take your life. We are canceling suicide tonight in Jesus' name. Yes. We are coming against that foul spirit that wants to tell you to take your life. You will live and not die, says the Lord. That's right. You will live and not die. And so That's we're gonna good. come against that. If you deal with suicide or you have a family member that does, tonight we are putting that thing on notice and we're breaking its power in Jesus' name. Death will not have power over you. Suicide will not have power over you. It's time. It's honestly time to get tired of just listening to voices, allowing the enemy to run, wreak havoc in our life. And we need believers in the body of Christ that will say, not on my watch. I'm not going to sit around while my friends and family take their life. I have to do something about it, whether it's prayer, whether it's deliverance, whether it's talking to them, whether it's counseling, whatever it is, we know God can supernaturally intervene. So that's what tonight so is. It's about, it's a supernatural night. We are at episode 158 of the podcast, but it's a supernatural night of prayer. And so our challenge to you guys is share the broadcast, like the broadcast. Let's get it out to as many people. I want you guys right now, 
take the link and start sending this link to your friends and family and say, join us for prayer. Because they might jump on this broadcast and we're going to be praying for them. And they might encounter God tonight through prayer. And so prayer is, there's no words to describe the power of prayer, the authority we have in Christ, the power we have in Christ, the yeah. ability we have tonight to go to the Father. And guys, I know there's Catholics in the chat. We don't have to go to Mary. We don't have to go to uh, we don't have to go to Peter. We don't have to go to Paul. We don't have to go to any of the saints. We can go as our mediator directly to Jesus and talk to him tonight and put our request before him. So Jesus said, you have not because you ask not. Ooh. And a lot of you are wanting God to answer prayers. I've said this so many times. You want God to answer prayers. You're not praying. So you're mad like, God, you haven't answered this prayer. And God's like, dude, you don't you don't even pray that. Like, how am I going to answer Luke prayers 11, Luke 18. that you haven't prayed? And so we want to make sure that we're not just expecting God to answer prayers that we're not even praying, but we actually want to pray tonight. That's so good. I'll start with prayer, and then we're not just going to pray. We're going to teach and pray, teach and pray, and talk in between. But we're going to we're gonna focus mostly on prayer tonight. And so let's just open up in prayer, guys. Let's start praying right now wherever you're at. Let's just pray first that the Lord would break apathy off of us, complacency off of, the, of us, stagnicity off of us, all that yeah. lukewarmness. I really feel God wants to light a fire in you. I yes. felt it last night watching that movie, The Dominant Revival, just remembering the early days of my salvation. And the Lord saying, Isaiah, it's time to go back to that first love. That's good. It's time to go back to that place of prayer. And I just felt God saying there's a second wave coming, which I'll share a video this week on that. But I really feel like the Lord says there's another wave coming. It's time to get your passion back. It's time to get your fire back. So, Father, we pray right now yes, over Jesus every name. single person. I want you guys to join us in prayer tonight. This is interactive. We pray, God, for every single person watching that you would light them on fire. Yes. I pray right now, Father, that you would anoint every single person in the chat. Angelica, Mona Lisa, AJ, Jacob. Debbie, right now I pray, God, Pyrex, touch them with your spirit over Trinity AJ, God, I pray you would anoint them tonight. Mm. God, we are asking you to touch people tonight by your spirit. Father, we don't want to just come and give information. God, we want demonstration. We want revelation. We want transformation, God. So Father, we are praying today in Jesus' name that you would touch every single listener on the replay watching live. We pray, God, that revival would break out in our yes. homes. We pray that revival would break out in our marriages, God. We pray that you would baptize us tonight in the Holy Spirit. And we'll go more into that later, but I'm just believing, even as we start, I just feel the fire of God, that there's going to be a baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's going to be spiritual gifts released. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, earnestly desire, desire. pursue spiritual gifts. Yep, so good. we're asking, for spiritual gifts. It, the Bible says to ask, Jared. Mm -hmm. We don't have to say, well, we don't want to ask. We don't really want to pray for them. If God says ask for them, why would we not pray for spiritual gifts? So I'm asking, Lord, that you would release Good. words of knowledge, words of wisdom. I'm praying for me and Jared to get words of knowledge yeah, and words absolutely. of wisdom and gift of faith to stir up right now. Some of you, it's time to stop being stagnant. It's time to wake up. It's time to step into your destiny. This is your season. This is your moment. This yeah, is your calling. Good. We serve a supernatural God. I refuse to serve a natural God. I refuse to serve the cessationist God that says there's no miracles, there's no deliverance, there's no healings. I believe God, according to Hebrews, is the same yesterday and today and forever. So God, mm. right now, we just pray you would permeate throughout. Enter the homes, God. We know that you're not bound by time, space, or place, and that right now the Holy Spirit can move. So guys, begin to open your mouth and pray. If you can pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit. If you can't, just pray in English and ask the Lord to fill you tonight with this Holy Spirit. Take the weight off of us, God. Mm. I feel like the Lord is saying yeah. this. There's so many of you in the chat that have so much weight you're carrying. You're exhausted from the spiritual so weight that good. you're carrying. But tonight, God is saying, I'm going to lift that weight off of you in Jesus' name. I'm going to take the burden off you, the anxiety, the stress, the worry, the depression, the fear. That is being lifted right That's now good. in Jesus' name. Anxiety and stress and weight must leave in Jesus' name. Father, just touch them by your Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you, Father. Anoint Thank you, them, Jesus. God. Touch every person watching right now. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, Touch and Lord, I just thank you for that scripture. Paul tells Timothy, God has not given you a spirit of fear, Come but on. a spirit of power, love, Jesus. and sound mind. So we just declare a sound mind over everyone in the chat right now. Yes. I break the back of every lie the enemy has been speaking. Sometimes we listen to the lies and we actually believe them and they become truth to us. So we just cancel the assignment of the enemy who's been lying to yes. you. And we just release the truth of God right now. We pray that just like Paul told Timothy, stir up that gift. He told him to fan it into flame. So just like Isaiah was saying, you're feeling dull, you're feeling 
uh, apathetic. We just we just stir up the gift of God inside yes. of you right now in Jesus' name, and we just thank you, God. We just pray for that igniting. Lord, just even bring back to remembrance right now every word that they've had, God, even since when they were younger. Prophecy, there's some people in the chat right now, you were prophesied over as a teenager. Yes. You've been running from God, and you're now just getting hunger. You're starting to get awakened. I've been seeing 11-11 uh, everywhere. It's John 11-11. Jesus said, my friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, and I'm going to go wake him up. So it's time for awakening. It's time for a fresh awakening. Yes. The devil's favorite word is tomorrow, but today, tonight, right now, Jeez. God is stirring up your heart. God is saying it's time to get rid of those pills. There's a young yes. lady in the chat right now. You've got razor blades by your bed. It's Come like on. every single day you grab that. It's part of your ritual. You say it's part of my life. It's the only way I can get through. No more cutting. He was cut for you. Yes. He bled for you so you didn't have to. So God is going to set you free tonight in Jesus name no more and he's going to remove the scars as a sign and a wonder to you yes. that God is your healer that he's going to restore you no longer you're going to need bloodletting to Come feel on. like you can just get through life no more coping yes. God is going to he is going to overwhelm you tonight with his goodness with his love I just feel the Holy Ghost right now yes. Isaiah he's just encouraging people right now like even before we even get rolling yes. I feel the Holy Ghost thank Come you on. Lord freedom right now God for whoever that is we just just pray that you would set them free, yes. that you would deliver them. We command these evil spirits to leave them in Jesus' name. Jesus and later, name. guys, we're going to pray mass deliverance, but we're believing right now that these spirits will leave you in Jesus' yeah. name right now. I want to even pray against that spirit of suicide we talked yeah, about earlier. If you're dealing with suicide and you want to let us know in the chat, I want you to type one. If you've dealt with suicide, don't type it unless you've dealt with it but you've had a voice telling you to take your life. We want to pray for you tonight. That is a lie from the devil. Yes. We come against that plan. That is yep. the devil's plan for your life. The devil's plan is for you to take your life. And the Bible says he steals, kills, and destroys, but Jesus, God comes to bring help. life and life more abundantly. So all these people in the chat, Carolina, Angie, Mercy, yeah. Kiki, Francisco, Cody, Cody right Lisa, now, Jesse, Mia. Mia, we break it off of Lisa, Michael. Shannon, Mercedes, Michael, and we break it now in Jesus' name. We command that spirit of suicide Jesus to go name. over David Long, over Shannon, yeah. over Jen, over Holy Fire, over um, right now, Grace. We command that to go now. The devil is a liar. We rebuke him now Jesus over Jay, name. Angel. We command that spirit of suicide to go right now. We command it oh, right now of um, Abba Tony. We command that yep. right now leave you. Christy, yep. Estefani, we pray right now freedom. Amanda. We pray breakthrough. We pray Holy Sita. Spirit, you would do it only you Hunter. can do. That you would be the Thank hope to you, them. Lord. That they don't have to take their life. That you do not have to take your life. Jesus has come to give life and life more abundantly. Good. We serve a God that offers you life today. Put your faith in the cross. Put your hope in the cross. Some of you are suicidal because you feel like you have no purpose, but there is purpose when you get connected come to Christ. On, that's there right. is purpose when you get connected to God. There is a destiny for you, a plan for you. You're not an accident. Mm. Samantha, I'm telling you right now, you're not an accident. You're not here by chance. You're not here a mistake from somebody God designed you. He told Jeremiah, before you were in your mother's womb, right. I knew you. And so God has a miraculous plan for your life. He has a supernatural plan for your life. It's time to break this. Tell those voices to leave you alone. Over David, I pray, Lord, break off suicide in yes. Jesus' name. Over Angelica, I pray, break off suicide. Over Grace, Lord, I pray, give them purpose. Give them destiny. Give yes. them dreams and visions. I pray some of you that feel hopeless and aimless, that God would give you a dream and a vision Come tonight. On, God good. would give you a destiny that you would say, no, I have a purpose. You know, one of the things when I got saved that I couldn't believe was waking up with purpose. This was mm. something I never had before. I would sleep in all day because I didn't want to get out of bed because I felt like I had no purpose. And then when I got saved, I woke up and was like, wow, I have a purpose. There's a reason why I'm here. Wow. And some of you, I hear the Lord saying, you sleep in not because you're tired, but you sleep in because you don't want to get out of bed because you feel like you have no purpose. Mm. You're exhausted. Even though you've slept 12, 14, 15 wow. hours, you're still tired. You're still exhausted. And God is going to break that off of you tonight in Jesus' yeah. name. That suicide has to go. The weariness has to go. The heaviness has to go right now. Lord, I pray hope would rise up. Right now, the Lord is releasing hope. Come on, share this video with someone. God is going to release hope over you right now in Jesus' name. Jessica said crippling anxiety. We come against that now. The Bible says be anxious about nothing, but instead pray about everything. So I pray, Lord, that crippling anxiety would be broken. I pray crippling anxiety would be broken. Hope rise up right now. The Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. And yeah. some of you are heart sick. 
Some of you are heart sick right now. Over love, I pray that you would just get breakthrough. I pray that that heart sickness would be cured by the hope of Jesus Christ. There is hope for you, a future. Maybe right now you're dealing with anxiety and like Jared just said, cutting and suicide and um, all these thoughts and all these issues, but your story isn't over. This is maybe the page you're on, but the Lord says, turn the page. It's a new chapter. Take the pen from the enemy's hand and let God be the author and the finisher of your faith. The Come devil's on. written your story for too long. It's time for God to write your story yeah. tonight in Jesus' name. Go in for Isaiah, it. I think it's 43, 19, it says, see, I'm doing a new thing. Come on. And right before that, he says, you got to forget about the past. He basically tells his people, you ain't seen yet, nothing yet from a, what I'm about to do. So I just declare that it's a new season. God's about to release a Come breakthrough on. for you. You've been listening. To, some of you are stuck in something that happened to you 10, 15, 20 years ago. And the Lord is saying, now is the day to release that. Now is the day to forgive that person. Now is the time to move on. You gotta let go of your past. God is saying, I've got something special for you, but those thoughts keep role playing in your mind. You are making scenarios up of something that happened and it's taunting you. So we just break the lies of the enemy right now in Jesus name. For things that, I just break the power of trauma. Father, we just release healing over their heart, healing over their mind. Father, we just ask you to deliver them now. And we pray for hope, God. We just pray, Lord, uh, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is like a tree of life. So, Father, I pray that they would move into a season of eating from the tree of life. God, that they would feel excitement again. I pray and it would be a sign and a wonder when they wake wake up tomorrow morning. God, it would be like they had the most incredible rest, like they're on vacation. They will feel so good, so restored. And they're going to be like, wow, I haven't felt this since I was a child when I had no cares, no worries, nothing was going on in my life. So God, we just release, you are doing something new. Can you not see it? Father, we just thank you for the, for the release. Now we thank you for your word, your Bible. The word says that uh, so it is with my word that it goes forth, that it always fulfills what I send it to do. It'll never return void or Come empty. On. So God, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for your healing power. We thank you for your delivering power. We thank you, Lord, that you have a you have a plan for every person here in this chat. So we just thank you that, yeah, tonight is the night that you've been waiting for. Come tonight on. you've been praying. Tonight you've been con- you've been contending, and you never thought. Some of you have like, this is who I'm going to be the rest of my Come life. On, that is a lie from the pit of hell. It doesn't matter what happened to you. It doesn't matter what your dad or your mom or your grandparents carried. All those generational curses die and are ending tonight. Come on. In Jesus' name. There's a, there is a new bloodline that you have been bought with Amen. and paid for. You are now a child of God and so we reverse the curse and we right now release over them Lord the confidence that they have as being a child of God no longer will they will they run no longer will they hide but they will be confident some of you have been hiding some of you have been just feeling like you can't get out of bed in the morning like Isaiah was saying and today is going to be a, a, a shift for you tonight is your breakthrough so we just release power in Jesus name thank you Lord and God we pray that you would break the spirit of pride so many of us in the chat right now and myself included at times we don't pray because we have hidden pride pride yeah. says you don't need to pray don't pride need says we don't need God in our everyday life I'm fine we don't need God's supernatural intervention and so a lack of prayer is the number one sign that pride is growing in your heart and tonight I believe God is gonna break pride off of us this is what the Bible says about pride God resists the proud mm. God resists, but draws near to the humble. So literally, if you're prideful and tonight you're going, God, I want to know you and you're you're chasing after him. As you're running towards God, God is running away from you. He's actually resisting you if there's pride in your heart. And we know that pride was one of the main sins that, that was in Lucifer's heart that caused him to be cast down to the earth. And so I pray God right now, search our heart. Yeah. Some of you are like, I don't have pride. Search my heart, God. I'm asking God to do this in me. Lord, search my yeah. heart as David prayed, and find out if there's any sin in me. Put your finger, God, on any sin in my life. Ask the Lord to do that right now, guys. If there's any sin in your life, I don't even know if I have sin. Well, let the Lord search you. Let the Lord search you, and what God will do is he'll actually put his finger on that area of sin and point it out and say, I want you to remove this out of your life. Mm. You're not walking according to my will. You're not walking the way I want. You know, Jesus said, if I cast out demons by the finger of God, 
So this, and, and then in one translation, it doesn't say finger, it says spirit of God. Wow. So the finger of God is the Holy Spirit, is the, is the, is the spirit of God. What that finger does, the Holy Spirit, because remember, finger of God and spirit of God are interchangeable. And the reason why Jesus used the word finger was in the Old Testament, actually Pharaoh's magicians said, these men are doing this by the finger of God. Wow. So when he told the Pharisees, it's by the finger of God, they remembered that the power he was talking about was the power that Pharaoh's magician said, we can't do what these guys are doing. This is not like our power. This is not like our witchcraft power. This is real power. So Jesus said, I cast the demons by the finger of God, the spirit of God. So God's deliverance is the fingerprint of God on your life. And God wants to put his finger on areas of your life that don't line up with his will. And guys, we're not reading these from notes. We're being led by the Holy Spirit. There's secret sin in our life. And the Holy Spirit in prayer tonight is saying, I want you to get rid of that secret sin. Wow. And guys, you know what it is. Come on, chat. You know, we're, re we're staring at the chat right now. <laughs> there's many of you in here right now that have, go have getting, got rid of everything else but there's that one sin. Dude, you sin. gotta preach that. There's that one that. sin you can't get rid of. It's that stronghold. Mm. It's a stronghold the enemy has on you. And right now, God is gonna release you from that. God is gonna break that. And, and for some of you, it doesn't even need to be God doing it. God's gonna convict you and you need to do it. Remember what Jesus said about sin? He said, if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. He didn't even say, pray that I would heal your eyes so it doesn't cause you to sin. That's what we would do. We'd be yeah. like, let's just pray for your eyes so you don't look at sin anymore. <laughs> he says, if your hand caused you to sin, he didn't say pray for your hand that you'd no longer sin with it. He said, cut it off. Yeah. Like you have to do something that's gonna hurt. You have to do something that's so gonna good. be painful. You have to do something that's, God wants to take something from mm -hmm. you tonight. You're like, I'm, I'm losing my hand. I'm losing my eye. But this is what he says. It's better to enter heaven with one eye than enter hell with two eyes. It's better to enter heaven with one arm, to be one arm Johnny in heaven, than to be two hand Jack in hell. I, mean, I don't know, I'm just making up names here. If you're in the chat, sorry, Johnny or Jack. But the point of it is this, do something drastic tonight. God, search my heart. Like Google, searching things, God says, I'm gonna search, is there any sin? And then what results popped up? What sin is in my life? Is there so pride? Good. Is there ego? Is there haughtiness? Is there discord in my heart? Is there jealousy? Mm. Is there bitterness, unforgiveness? I mean, the list goes on. God wants to search you right now. So let God search you. Let God search you. Come to him tonight vulnerable and say, God, now, I have never, Jared, in 13 years of doing this, serving God, I've never come to the altar, never in 13 years, you might have, I haven't, and said, God, search me, and God goes, you're good. <laughs> I've never, I've never been in prayer tonight and said, Lord, search my heart. Is there any sin? Is there anything? And God's like, oh no, you're completely fine. You're where you need to be every time. Even as I'm praying tonight, the Lord's like, oh, there's an area here. Oh, yeah. there's an idol here. Oh, there's compromise here. Oh, there's, and it might not even look like sin. It might not even be sin, but it's become an idol that I've, uh, something in my life that I've worshiped, or it's preventing me from reading the Bible, preventing me from prayer. So whatever that is, the Lord is gonna smash the idols. Yeah, type search me Lord in the chat. The Lord is going to smash the idols. And I wanna make sure I, I say this, the Lord's not just gonna do it, but some of you are gonna do it. Some of you tonight, So good. I want you to post a video and tag me. You're gonna break your vape. You're gonna break your marijuana pipe. I know there's a lot of you in the chat that are addicted to marijuana. Yeah. Well, brother, it's legal. The Bible says just because it's lawful doesn't mean it's beneficial. Just because it's permissible doesn't mean it's beneficial. The marijuana pipe, the crack pipe, the vape, some of you are addicted, the cigarettes, whatever it is that you have going on in your heart or in your life, whatever secret yeah, sin that is. break your phone. Break it. Yep, yep. break some, it. Some of you, it's your phone. Yeah. Like, how could you tell me? Now, if you're a young kid and your parents bought it for you, give it back to your parents. Yeah. Okay, don't be throwing you. One parent told me like, you told my son to break it and he threw his laptop out the window <laughs> and I bought it. I'm like, okay, if you're young and you didn't pay for it, don't throw your laptop yeah. away, give it to your parents. But I think about this, Jared, what's more radical, breaking your phone or cutting off your hand? I mean, cutting yeah. off your hand is way more radical. Gouging out your eye or deleting Instagram. What is worse? Ooh, so maybe maybe tonight you need to get rid of your Instagram. Maybe tonight you need to get your TikTok. I know we went to like a direction here, but I really feel like the Lord is saying there's conviction coming. There's the days we're going into, the days we're headed into, the storm we're going into in these last days that we're all in, we can't afford to be lukewarm. We can't afford to have idols maybe a yeah. decade ago but we're living in a time where the Great Commission is our assignment, is what we're focused on. And I can't fulfill the Great Commission while also fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Yeah. I can't 
I can't give my birthright for a bowl of soup. So Preach. one ounce of one second of pleasure, five seconds of pleasure, 10 seconds of pleasure is not worth your inheritance. That one bowl of soup that you want to give up. So I believe tonight the Lord is just going to search us and, and wash us and cleanse us and convict us. What does James say? Don't be just hearers of the yes. word, but be doers of the word. Yep. So some of you, the Lord just spoke to you. You just prayed the prayer that David prayed. It's the most famous prayer. Search me, Lord. Search, Search me. me, Lord. Now you need to put in the chat, what did he say to you? Come on. What did he? That, that's accountability, right? Because if we just keep it to ourselves, now we're now we're asking like, Lord, you're asking me to, some of you need to break up the relationships that yes. you're in right now. Some of you, you just keep going back because it's this one night fling, it's this relationship that nobody knows about, you keep going back to it, but that is bondage, that is sin, and you need to get rid of it. It's time to cut ties, no more playing games. Like, you go to you go to church on Sunday, and you have this persona that everything is okay, but yet on the weekends before church, you're doing all this stuff, you're fornicating with your yep. girlfriend, it's time to end all of that. God has revealed it to you, now it's time for you to actually do it. I can tell you right now, just even in the domino revival, something Pastor Mike would say is 99% mm -hmm. surrender is actually 100% disobedience. Some of you have been playing the game. Yes. You're like, I've given God like 99% of my heart, but there's just one area. Listen, that's why you're still struggling. In my own life, the moment I surrendered 100% of my life to the Lord was the day that I was delivered. Come on. Was the day that I was set free. Was the day the presence of God flooded my life and I began to cry tears and, and the deliverance took place. Before that, I used to throw my pot away. I used to throw my booze away. I used to throw it away. And guess what, Isaiah? Three days later, I'd go buy some more. Wow. I would go back to the dealer because I couldn't surrender. So some of you, you need to get rid of it. You need to, it's just, it's extreme. Some of you need to cut off relationships. And I just want to pray right now. So Father, yes. I pray for courage right now in Jesus' name. Jesus. Courage to actually do it, Lord. It's one thing to hear the word. It's one thing to feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit. It's another thing to actually do it. So God, I pray for courage now in Jesus name. Some of you are, you're deleting apps on your phone right now. You're deleting the, the sex apps. You're deleting the dating apps. Yes. You're deleting just social media because you know all of that leads to the bondage that you're in. Some of you right now, you're flushing uh, pills down the toilet. Some of you are throwing your weed away. You're breaking your vapes. I can see it right now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that they would do it 100%. They wouldn't just get rid of a couple things and then leave the bottles in the fridge. God, I pray that they would take out the bottles, dump them down the sink, God, that they would say, I am going to make sure my home is sanctified holy. I want this to be a place where the Spirit of God can rest and yes. remain. So God, we just release courage now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for faith coming into the chat. For everyone that's watching right now, the gift of faith being released right now in Jesus' name, no longer will you be caught up no longer will you be stuck in this sin cycle just like a washing machine has cycles some of you have been stuck in the sin cycle you Come push on. the button and it goes around and around and around no more i even feel the lord saying he's gonna break off lust right now yes, in jesus I name just felt that. so if you're if you're dealing with lust right now and it's not just lust of like with relationships it's lusting after other things that are just good things and yes. now it has become bondage to you i just want you to like stretch your hands out right now wherever you're at in your living room Gee, you're in your car you're you're driving awesome. some of you you got this video sent to you this is a replay it's like a week later from the time we filled it i just want you to lift your hands right now yes. so father i break the spirit of lust right now in jesus name and god i just pray that you would release them i break the power of the enemy we come against the the with the blood of jesus over them we come against every foul spirit and we command you to go right now in jesus name and father i pray for an infilling of the holy spirit right now that they would feel your power manifesting all through their body and i I pray for a new addiction, Lord. I pray yes. for a new, Lord, that they would have this holy reverence for you, that they would gaze upon you instead of pornography, that they would find their eyes locking on you. You told John, come up here in Revelation. I'm going to show you things, Lord. I pray that they would get their eyes locked on you. And I just yes. release that in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. And guys, for those of you asking who this man is, this is Jared McCacker one of my best friends. His channel is in the description. So I've seen a bunch of comments of people saying, who is this? His channel is in the description. Make sure you check that out. We pray tonight, Lord, that we would have continual fellowship with you. Yes. Some of you, I want you to ask yourself this question. How often do you fellowship with the Holy Spirit? And I'm not talking about religious. I'm oh, not talking about going in the closet and praying, which we need to do according to the book of Matthew. We need to get in the secret place. We're going to pray about that as well. But I I'm talking about, do you fellowship with the Holy Spirit? And one thing I've been trying to do is being aware 
The Holy Spirit is a person and I want to just acknowledge him throughout the day. As I'm walking around my house, as I'm driving my kids to school, as I'm doing anything, just I love you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what are you doing in my life? Holy Spirit, what do you want from me? Is there anything you want me to do? Like, when are we going to be available to him? We make ourselves available to our boss, to our family, to our friends, to our wife, to our husband, to our kids. We're always available to every other person. But I want you to say, Holy Spirit, I want to be available for you. I'm available. Let, like right now, let the Holy Spirit know in the chat, I'm available, God. If you want to use me, you can use me. Do you want me to share? Some of you go, man, I would love for the Holy Spirit to give me a word of knowledge for mm -hmm. someone at the grocery store. I would love the Holy Spirit to tell me something amazing to do. Like, hey, right now, call so-and-so and tell them this. I would love the Holy Spirit to do something like that. But we don't ever ask the Holy Spirit. We don't ever ask the Holy Spirit to do that in our heart. We don't ever say, Lord, I'm available. Holy Spirit, use me for your glory and your honor and your purposes. So make yourself available to the Holy Spirit. Make yourself in fellowship. Say, Holy Spirit, I wanna fellowship with you. I wanna hang out with you. I wanna know you. I'm available, Holy Spirit. You can use me. So don't expect the Holy Spirit to force himself That's on good. you. He's a gentleman, he's a person, and don't expect him just to force himself into your life just like Jesus was invited to the wedding banquet and then did the miraculous, we have to invite him into areas of our life. So invite him into your life right now. Invite him into your marriage. I want you right now, just as you're praying, which I hope all of us are praying. This is a prayer meeting. If you didn't see the title, welcome <laughs> into the prayer meeting. But I want you to pray right now, Holy Spirit, you're welcome in my marriage. You're welcome in my family. You're welcome at my job. You're welcome. And somebody like, I've never even done this. I've never welcomed him. And watch as he begins to move in your life. You're welcome in my mind. You're welcome in my heart. You're welcome in every area of my soul, my emotions. You're welcome in my will. You're welcome in my kid's life. Mm. Invite the Holy Spirit into the life of your kids. You have spiritual authority over your children. Take authority and say, man, I want them to serve God. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. I wanna, I wanna make my life a place where the Holy Spirit is comfortable. And let me say this, and then I'll let Jared pray something here. Guys, how is it that we've made our lives comfortable for demons to live in, but not the Holy Spirit to live oh, in? Oh. How is it we live our lives in a way where the devil's Dude. comfortable with how we're living, with what we're watching, what we're listening to, what we're doing, but then the Holy Spirit is grieved. Yeah, He's grieved, Jared, by what we watch and what we listen to and how we live our lives. And the Bible says that you can grieve him by the way you live. You can quench him by not allowing him to move in church services and not allowing prophecy and deliverance and miracles. That's how you quench him. But you grieve him directly related to how you live your life. Uh, ungodly speech, the Bible says, grieves the Holy Spirit. Unforgiveness, mm. grieves the Holy Spirit. Jealousy, grieves the Holy Spirit. The Bible says rage, grieves the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit it really has emotions. And it's like when you put nails on a chalkboard and you get kind of grieved, you're like, oh, it feels bad. Like your insides feel bad. That's, what, that's how the Holy Spirit responds to Christians that lie, mm. to Christians that fornicate, to Christians that drink and party and smoke and cuss and talk bad. And, use, and the Bible says use foul language. It grieves the Holy Spirit. So let us live our lives where before we watch something, before we listen to something, we remember, oh, the Holy Spirit's doing this with me. Like, Holy Spirit, do you want to do this? Because I'm doing a lot of things in my life that the Holy Spirit doesn't really want to do. Lord, I want, I want to have fellowship with you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I want to have fellowship with you. I pray, Lord, over every person in the chat that they would have a new awareness of you. I pray, Lord, you would just remind yeah, them throughout the day snake. of having fellowship with you. Again, I don't want to put a burden on you guys. I'm not trying to be a, a Pharisee or religious or put a yoke of bondage. We, we got to get this conviction, though. We've gone so long with no conviction. We've gone so long ignoring him. And now it's like, oh man, I actually have to talk to him. Like, this is weird. I'm used to just ignoring him all the time. We've gone so long doing so little that now we're just okay with not ever talking to him. And the Holy Spirit's saying like, I miss you. And here's the crazy part, Jared. The Holy Spirit wants to talk to yes. us. Like that's mind blowing the God of the universe. He has thoughts about me. The Bible says his thoughts outnumber the sand on the seashores. So the Holy Spirit thinks about you. God Good. is thinking about you. Lord, I pray I would think about you the way you think about me. Just, I pray the Lord would be on my mind. The Holy Spirit would be on my mind. Like awaken us, God, awaken so us to your reality and let us be aware of just the Holy Spirit, Father, right now. And Thank you, Lord. Uh, Isaiah 50 verse four says, he wakens me morning by morning and opens my ears to hear like someone being taught. Come on. God, another version says he tunes my ears to hear. So 
I just release the, the tuning of your ears. Your ears are gonna be open to hear the voice of God. I remember the first time I ever heard the Holy Spirit speak to me. He told me to go pray for a stranger inside of a coffee shop. And I was like, no way, wow. Jose, I am not going in there. And then I finally obeyed the Lord because I thought, you know what, Isaiah, I've been a fool for the devil my Come whole on. life. And I look stupid for that guy. You know, why not look foolish for the Lord? So I walk into this coffee shop. I remember I go up to the, the owner of the coffee shop. I said, man, this is going to sound crazy. I've never done this before, but I felt like God told me to pray for you. And she looked at me and she goes, that's weird. And I was like, oh man, and immediately all my mind's flooding. Like, I don't hear the Lord. What's wrong with me? Why am I doing this? But guess what? In a split second, she went from saying, this is weird, to big giant crocodile tears rolling wow. down her eyes and saying, What's weird is I went to the doctor. I've been having really bad um, pain in my in my head. I finally got a CT scan. They found a lump in the. They found a tumor on the back of my brain. And and this morning, she said when I came home, I didn't have the courage to tell my husband or my children. But this morning when I woke up, I said, God, if you're real, have someone wow. pray for me. Wow. And here you are. So immediately I began to pray for her. I just prayed the prayer of faith that God would heal her. And I walk out of that coffee shop the very first time being obedient to the Holy Spirit. Some of you need to be obedient. Some of you are going to have ears that open and you're going to start knowing like you're going to break up relationships. You need to call somebody. You need to write a letter. You need to forgive. And then all of a sudden I walk into my truck. Isaiah, you're going to love this. And I, I get in my truck and the presence of God floods my truck and I start crying and I hear the Lord say this, Jared, I'm looking for a generation that will just say yes to my voice because they're always saying no. And I just had to pause right there and just let you know, like, that is our that is our M.O. We just say no to the Holy Spirit. He's speaking. But now your ears are going to be tuned to his voice. Now he's going to. And check this out, Isaiah. Ten years later from that day, I prayed for that lady. I'm preaching at a church. I, in between services, that lady walks up to me and says, Jared, no you'll never way. believe. She says, Jared, do you remember me? And I was like, oh, no, what, were you a teacher in high school? Hey, I'm better now, you know, hopefully. <laughs> and she goes, no, my name's so-and-so. I was the owner of that coffee shop. I'm like, oh, my gosh, you're alive. And I said, I just want to make sure I have my story straight. I start staring. She goes, yeah, that's absolutely right. And I go, wow, wow God's touched you. God's healed you. Guess what? That lady joined a Bible study in my mom's house. Come on. Only God could write that story. Only God wow. can make that happen. Listen, that's that's the power of the Holy Spirit yes. and having fellowship with the Holy Spirit. is It is not boring to be a Christian. He has got so many assignments waiting for you. All you have to do is say yes to his voice. And the moment you surrender, some of you, you still haven't surrendered. You're still Come sitting on, back in the back of Come the pews. On. You're just waiting like, is this going to really happen? I don't know. And you're listening to the lies of the enemy me saying, come on, just turn off the chat, turn off the stream. You don't need to listen to these guys pray. You don't need any of that stuff. The enemy is trying to destroy your life. Yep. He's got an assignment. He's put a hit on you. It's time for you to break free and li stop listening to the lies. Do you know his language is lying? Come That's on. all he does. Come on. He, all he, tw he twists the truth of God. He perverts it. He lies to you. But today it's time to surrender. If you want to surrender, just put surrender in the chat. Say, yes. I'm surrendering everything to the Holy Spirit. I'm surrendering my life to Jesus Christ. I'm going to listen. I'm going to obey. And this is confirmation for you right now. So, Father, I just thank you now. I just thank you for the courage, Lord. I just feel so strongly that there's people the enemy is trying to kill. He's yes. actually trying to destroy their lives. I pray for Isaac right now, one of my former students who's in Vegas that reached out to me yesterday. I pray deliverance over Isaac, Lord. I pray that he would be delivered of drugs. He'd be delivered of alcohol. He'd be delivered of suicidal thoughts, Lord. I just pray hope into my friend right now, my former student. I just pray for everyone. I pray for Steve that's surrendering in the chat. I pray for Kenzie. I pray for Mao. I pray for Elena right now, Kiki, Lord. I pray right now yes. in Jesus' name for Bobby. I just pray for Debbie. Thank you, Lord, for their surrendering. They're saying it's time. I'm not going to listen. I'm not going to be a pawn for the enemy Come any on. longer. Just being pushed around here and there and having no control over my life. You want to be controlled? Be controlled by the Spirit of God. There's nothing better, Isaiah. There's nothing more freeing than being the, led by the Spirit. The Bible says, so it is those that are born of the Spirit. It's like the wind. Yeah, you can't know. tell where it's coming or where it's going. You need to be born by the Spirit. You need to have your sails up and allow the Spirit of God to lead your 
your life. It is the most invigorating experience on planet Earth to be filled with the Spirit, to be led by a Spirit, to be listening to Him every single day. You're going to wake up tomorrow morning. Some of you are going to wake up tomorrow morning and you're going to be like, what voice is this? I don't even understand it. What is going on. on? I hear a still small voice that's bringing peace instead of anxiety. I feel hope all of a sudden flooding my life. You are going to feel the power of God like you never have. You are surrendering. Today is the day of salvation. Come on. Today is the day you've been waiting for. Today, some of you in your, your marriage, you've been crying out to the Lord. I just prophesy new life into your marriage now in Jesus' name. Yes. I prophesy hope into your marriage. I prophesy the, the, the spouse that you've been contending for, that this would be the year that they surrender everything to Jesus I just released yes. that right now. Yes, and wow. Father, I pray. Right, whew, I feel the Holy Ghost. I, I feel wanna, the Holy I Ghost. I got caught up, almost fell over right here. <laughs> I pray, Lord, that you would break <laughs> spiritual deafness off of people. Yes. There's some of you in the chat that say, I can't hear God and I can't distinguish my voice from his voice, but God is going to break the spiritual deafness of you so not being good. able to hear his voice. And one of the reasons is, goes back to what we said earlier, there's so many other voices of wow. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Hulu, Netflix, Disney+, Plus, my job, my work, and Twitter, and this, every other voice. There's a million people preaching at you all week long. And then you go to church and you let God preach at you for an hour and wow. think that 167 hours, the devil's preaching to you in the culture. And that one hour is going to, is going to have you be, you're going to make it. You won't make it. You need to hear the voice of God. God Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. So we want to hear the voice of God and God wants you to hear him. He's not hiding his voice. So father, we pray right now. And guys, this is prayer and teaching, prayer and teaching, prayer and teaching. This is interactive tonight. We just pray, God, that you would open up our ears. Right now, we command that spiritual deafness to leave now. Yeah. That, that confusion of, is this God? Is this me? I pray, God, that you would make your voice clear. The Bible says his voice is that of the multitudes. God, make your voice clear yeah. so we can hear you, so we know what you're having us do, so we can be led by your voice. We can be led by the Holy Spirit, not by the spirit of the culture, not by the spirit of Babylon, not by the spirit of this age. Let us be led by the Holy Spirit. Lord, give us your voice. Speak into our ear, God. Whisper into our ear. Guys, remember, the voice is a still small voice. So if there's a million other people shouting, God isn't shouting. God is a still small voice. Mm. You're not going to be able to hear him. Some of you need to get rid of all the other voices. That's good. You need to detox from all the <laughs> other opinions and let the Holy Spirit speak That's to good. you. So one thing is there's too many other voices. The second thing is you're too far from God. If I whisper and you're 100 feet away, you're not going to hear me. The closer I get to you, the easier it will be for yeah. you to hear me whisper. So it's all about proximity. I need to be close to God so that when he whispers, I can hear him. Whispering in someone's ear is a very intimate thing. I want to be close to you so I can hear what you have to say. God, I pray that I would be close to you. The Bible says this, sin separates us from God. A better translation is this, sin puts distance between us and God. That sin in your life is distancing you from God. But God says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. God longs to be near you. He doesn't want the sin to separate you. It's good. God over and over told the people, it's your sin that has cut you off from me. He said in Isaiah, I cried out all day long to a nation that didn't call my name. He said, I was ready to respond. This is not the book of Isaiah, but no one called out to me. Like God is literally there waiting going, is anybody gonna call out to me? But no, they were so busy with all their idols, they never called upon God. Mm. So Father, we pray we would call upon you. I even wanna just pray, spend a couple minutes here, and we are still gonna pray healing, and we're gonna pray some deliverance, we're gonna pray for some comments in the chat. I know for those of you on Facebook, I just checked, Facebook's bugged, it says zero viewers, so just stay on Facebook. If you're there, you're there, okay? It says zero viewers, but it's it's bugged, it's, it's the website. But we have 2,200 on YouTube, which is incredible. 2,200 wow, people right on. now, Jared, all praying together. And the Bible talks about, Jared, the power of agreement, yes. where two people agree on something. <laughs> now, that. if two people agree, what happens if 2,200 people agree on something? There is power when all of us come together, literally tonight as a mega church, coming together as an end time army praying. So one thing we wanna pray, pray for, I feel the Holy Spirit leading me, families, this is what the Lord is saying. The chaos, it's time to stop. The chaos in the family, the fighting in your family. I got four little kids, y'all. I know all about fighting in the family and bickering and running around and screaming. God, God's gonna bring some peace to your home. God's gonna bring some rest and God's gonna bring some peace to your home tonight in Jesus' name. No more fighting, no more chaos. 
family members that aren't saved, guess what? They're getting saved. My brother's sitting here, uh, he's the producer of the show. He's running the camera, sound, all of that. He was literally running from God, and this is a true story. He would put a towel under his door where there's a door crack because he didn't want the Holy Spirit to come in his room. He was like, something <laughs> is making me happy trying to come in my room. So he was putting wow. a towel thinking, Jared, thinking a towel <laughs> was going to stop the Holy Spirit from coming in. Makes and some sense. of you have family me- <laughs> Some of you have family members. Yeah, the laugh in the back. <laughs> some of you have family members that are, they're trying to stop. They think the Holy Spirit's, you know, just going to leave them alone. And no, if they're in your home, listen. We're all getting saved in this yes, house. As for right. me and my house, this is what Joshua said. Joshua said, y'all are going to go serve idols. This is what he told the people. He said, you're all going to go serve idols. But for me and my house, we shall serve, serve the Lord. Lord. So no, devil, you're not coming up in my house. You're not going to tell my kids what to do. You're not going to boss my kids around. You're not, you're not, they will not do what you want them to do. This is my home. This house has been anointed. The blood of Jesus surrounds this home. The power of the Holy Spirit is in this home. And God is in this house. Yes. No devil, no demon, no witchcraft, no spirit. God, the only spirit that lives here is the Holy Spirit. Come on. God is up in this house. And parents, today, draw a line in the sand today. Right now, right now, start praying right now for your home. We pray, Lord, right now for bring, bring peace. And guys, we're teaching as in this a lot, but we're encouraging you as you're praying. We're all supposed to be praying. We're encouraging you as you pray. Father, we pray yes. that you would bring peace in our homes over our chaotic children. Our, our, some of our kids are rebellious. I pray God break that spirit of rebellion off of our kids in Jesus' name. My kids will not be rebellious. No, it can't be this way that my kids are strung out on drugs. It can't be this way that my kids are alcoholics. There's no way this is how their story ends. I raised them in church. I'm prophesying to somebody. I raised them in church. They were in the pew. They were in the prayer meeting. No way, no way the devil has them. There's no way he's keeping them. I'm going to fight. I'm fighting. There might be a Goliath, but I'm here to take his head off. So Satan, get off my kids. Come on, pray chat. Satan, get off my marriage. Satan, get off my family. Maybe your husband's unsaved. You don't leave your husband because he's not saved. The Bible says you can win him over by your conduct. That's what Paul says. And your holiness covers your husband's unholiness, Paul says. Your holiness covers your kid's unholiness. And Paul says, if that wasn't the case, how would your kids be holy? How would your husband be holy? But because of your holiness, it covers your kids and your and your husband. So Father, we ask you right yes. now, bring resolution in our home. Bring peace in our home. Bring commitment in our home. Restore commitment. Restore trust, God. Lord, I want you guys to pray this right now. And you can even type in the chat just as a confirmation. Lord, we dedicate our family to you. Yes. We dedicate our home to you. Release vision in our home. Release dreams in our home, God. Unite our family. No more, no more division. Come on. Come on, guys. No more division. No more division. It's, it's too much. It's too much. Life's too short. Call your sister. Call your brother. Call your aunt. Call your uncle. Stop with this whole, oh, I don't want to talk to them. They hurt me three years ago, four years ago. And it's life is too short. No one on their deathbed cares about all that. Right now is the time. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, call your sister, call your brother, call your mom, call your dad, call your family. This is a night of reconciliation, Jared. God is reconciling you and your family. So let the Holy Ghost convict you. It's going to be hard. It doesn't matter. It's not easy to forgive. Unforgiveness is you drinking poison thinking the other person is going to die. Forgive them right now. The Lord is saying, uh, literally tonight, I, I see some of you on on the phone calling your sister you haven't talked to in years, your brother, your aunt, your uncle. Listen, Jared, I'm Hispanic. I already know Hispanics can hold grudges for years. Yeah. Some of you Hispanics in the chat, it's been 40 years. You're like, <laughs> she said it's something bad about my tamales at Christmas. <laughs> like, dude, it's been 40 years. Let it go. Who cares? It was tamales. It doesn't matter. They were dry. Yeah, don't hold the grudge. Don't hold the grudge. Some of you have been holding the grudge. Really, the Lord is saying, break the grudge right now isaiah i got a testimony too about unforgiveness in our in my own family me and my one of my older brothers had this falling out and it lasted for years it got so bad that we would show up to family functions at a different time and i remember as i was seeking the lord remember you're you're spending time in the presence of the lord you're asking the lord to search your heart and he's going to reveal something to you. And guess what kept being revealed? Wow. Time to forgive oh, your brother. Feels bad. Oh, man. And I didn't want to do it. And I remember the day that I did. I remember walking out of my room, telling my wife, I'm going to go forgive my brother. I walk into our office. This is before I was even in ministry, Isaiah. I was just trying to be a Christian. I was in construction. I walk into our office, and I look at my brother, 
and we didn't even talk to each other. We had zero relationship. And I said, hey, I want to talk to you. And he's like, what? Kind of sarcastically. And I said, I just want to tell you, I'm sorry. I love you. And I need you to forgive me for the way I've been treating you. And it, immediately he falls into my arms, wraps his arms around me, starts sobbing and saying, I never meant to hurt you. And, and then all of a sudden, the presence of God fills our office. My two other brothers come in. They start crying. We start talking to each other. We start forgiving one another. My dad, who doesn't even need a reason to cry, walks in the, like, why am I crying? Oh, wow. hey, what's going on? For three hours, we sat there. Wow. Confessed our sins, told each other how much we loved each other. And it was just this powerful moment where I was obedient to the word of God coming to me saying like, this is the next step for you. Because guess what? When I didn't forgive, it was stunting mm. my spiritual growth. I was no longer listening to the voice of God being obedient. So I was, it was like a, it's like a plant that's growing. And then all of a sudden you put a five gallon bucket on top of it. It's going to stunt its growth. And so as soon as I did that, everything began to change. And then suddenly my brother goes, Hey, I think something, something special just happened. And this is not the end. Let's meet again next week. So we meet again the week later, Wednesday. All of a sudden, we go, well, what are we going to do? I don't know. Let's just see what God does. Isaiah, all of a sudden, we look Come at each on. other. We start saying, hey, are Come we on. good? Hey, did I do anything to like offend you? No, no, we're good. And the literal presence of God descended in that little construction office with no, you know, no worship music was playing. We didn't even have a Bible out. We were just there telling each other we loved each other. The presence of God comes. We all start crying. We all start praying. We all start worshiping the Lord together. And this went on for months and months wow. and months. We called it God Day. It was so powerful. It, it went every... Every Wednesday, even our subcontractors wouldn't call us on Wednesday mornings because they knew there was some God meeting happening. And I remember a local pastor comes to me and goes, dude, what's happening? I hear about the presence of God so strong in your office and this little God meeting. What's your formula? What's your secret? What's the curriculum you're going through? I'm like, there's no secret. There's no formula. He's like, there's got to be something. I want to package this up and, and do a 10-week series at my local church. And I'm like, listen, there's nothing. Wait, there was one thing. Mm. One step of obedience yes. released healing and breakthrough for an entire family wow. that allowed us to experience God in a supernatural way. Some of you, you've been waiting for the other person to change. Come on. That's what I was doing. It's time. That's what God said. I kept praying against my brother and the Lord spoke to me and says, he's not the one that needs to change. It's you. Wow. So I just pray right now, Lord, for forgiveness, forgiveness. Lord, yes. right now in homes that forgiveness would flow because guess what? Christ told you, I've forgiven you, so you have to forgive others. He even said if you have a gift and you're at the altar and you have ought against your brother and you have unforgiveness, leave the gift. Go forgive them, then come back and give it. So we need to be able to release this right now. So Father, I know it's Thanksgiving coming up next week. I know mm, this is a sensitive yep. time for people. They're not looking forward to seeing that uncle, that cousin, that relative. So God, I pray this would be the change. This would be the day the Spirit of God hits yes. Thanksgiving and changes an entire family. God, I pray for the peace of God to flood. Lord, it would be so supernatural because they are going to be responsive. They are going to be responsive. They are going to be they are going to respond to this word right now in Jesus' name. So, Father, I pray for courage, and I break the back of lies yep. right now. Yep. I can hear them flooding in. Yes. It's it's like it's it's louder than actually what I'm saying right now. So I break the power of those lies and I pray that their ears would be tuned to your voice, Father, right now, that you are all about reconciliation. This is the ministry of reconciliation. You want families restored in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, even in marriages right now, we've seen so many chats, pray for my husband, yeah. pray for my wife. I pray that this would be the day, Lord, that there would be restoration in marriages, that, Lord, husbands and wives would lock eyes with each other and say, I remember what it used to be like. Remember when we would just stare at each other. Remember when you used to pursue me, I used to pursue you. I pray for love and intimacy now to flood the home. I pray that God, you would give them back what the enemy has stolen. What God has joined together, let nothing separate. Father, even last night, Lord, I had a prophetic word for a couple and I release this now. Lord, there is this thing we say when people get married, they tie the knot. Lord, and they've been separated. God is gonna retie the knot in your marriage right now Come in on. Jesus' name. 
and not just a single knot. He's going to do a double knot, Isaiah, so that it cannot be pulled out. It cannot be compromised any longer. So, Father, I release this word over everyone in the chat. Lord, I see this woman who's crying out to you, God. Her her tears are flooding, just like it says in Psalm, my my. My tears are flooding my bed right now. I've got no hope. God sees you, and he's going to restore your marriage. Today, Father, I pray there would be supernatural restoration for those that have been crying out in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Guys, if you're having any audio issues, just refresh. It's it's good on our end. Someone said, why is Isaiah rocking? Bro, I'm in the Holy Woo. Ghost. I'm in the fire. I'm rocking back and forth because I Let's feel the go. Holy Spirit. How could I sit still when the Holy Ghost is moving like this? Father, go. thank you. That you're releasing forgiveness. Someone said, frozen. No, no refresh, it. refresh. Enemies alive. Lord, we pray your anointing. We pray your power. Guys, we're good on this end. The network's good. Everything's running green. So you might just have to refresh if it's freezing. Lord, right now we pray all these issues would go in Jesus' yes, name. In Jesus God, name. every complication would go. We just pray, Holy Spirit, that you would have your way. On, we just pray, Lord, your anointing to be released right now in Jesus' name. Your fire to be released right now in Jesus' name. Okay, a lot of you say it's working. If it's not, just refresh the feed. Right now, God, touch him, Father. Touch every single person. We pray, God, that you'd bring restoration. I want some of you, whatever specific thing you need prayer for, I want you to type it in the chat. I know yes. it might freeze the chat here. But we're going to be praying for a couple minutes, specific prayer requests. And I'm going to have Jared pray for healing. And then yes. I'm going to be praying. We're not going to go long on these, but I'm going to be praying for deliverance as well. We could probably do this for four or five hours, these prayer streams, because it's just <laughs> the Holy Spirit moving. There's a million things we can pray for and talk about. But right now, that what we've been saying is that the rest in your home, the peace yes. in your home, the forgiveness in your home is being released in Jesus' name. Come on. Let us know, guys. What do you need for what do you need God to do in your life in the chat? Let us come in agreement over Christie's mind. We pray healing right now. Yes. We pray healing and restoration in Jesus' name. I pray over uh, every person in the chat that's typing Ruby's unbelieving husband, bring restoration yes. over Isabel, restoration Thank in you, the marriage. Lord. Over Michael, we come against divorce right now in Jesus' name. Diane, we pray for your yeah. marriage in Jesus' name. Pray Misty, we healing. pray your hip would be healed right now. Sarah, we pray your son would be healed in Jesus' name. I pray for restoration right now in Jesus' name. Yeah. We pray for Mark Casto for land and a place to build a revival yes. house in Jesus' on, name. We pray right now over Mark Casto. God, touch his ministry right now in Jesus' name. We pray for Trinity to grow cr closer to Christ, God, in Jesus' name. We pray for Eric and Aaron, this Lolo's kids. We pray, touch them in Jesus' yes. name. Jesus we pray name. for Audrey's unborn baby. God, bring protection yeah. in Jesus' mighty name. Over William, we come against all anger right now. Good. Over Paul, we pray right now. Over Lee, we pray healing over her son. I pray over um, Jer Geraldine's shoulder to be healed in Jesus' name. We pray over Ocean that that orphan spirit would leave in Jesus' name. That orphan spirit would leave. Over Ashley, we pray healing over Shut autoimmune disease. And guys, as we're praying, come in agreement. Over Sabrina, I pray every dental issue would be healed. The healing power of God would be released right now. The healing power of God. Lizzie, we are in slow mode. She's like, what happened to the slow mode in the chat? We're in slow mode. There's just a lot of people in the chat typing. We got about 2,500 on here typing, so it comes fast. Maya, we break depression. Desi, we yes. break addiction. I pray Jade would be free from nicotine right now. I pray for Cassandra healing in her neck and back. I pray for Sithra legs to be healed in Jesus' name right now. We pray lust would be broken. Many of you are asking for deliverance of lust. We pray that would be broken right now in Jesus' yes. name. Thank you, Lord, over Angel's marriage. Restore, restore, restore kids right now i pray for debbie feels like she has brain fog i pray be healed and restored in jesus name bucola we pray be healed in jesus name joshua i pray your shoulder is healed in jesus name we break the generational curse of alcoholism off of erica yes it ran in your no family until it ran into you it Come stops on, now in jesus, yeah, name. jesus name i pray for alex for uh, his marriage wow. right now I pray for MD's daughter who needs surgery. Healing, healing, healing right now. Yes. Healing right now. Heidi, I pray be healed in your leg right now. I don't know if you want to try to. I know they're coming fast, dude. <laughs> I told him, I said, you might not be able to read them this fast, yeah, but you can Sonya, try. I pray for financial breakthrough them, right now. I pray for Juanita for yes. fantasy to be broken off their life. I thank you for God. spiritual breakthrough. We break off witchcraft over yes. Scott right now in Jesus' name. Jesus we just name. thank you Touch for him. Edward needing deliverance from that generational curse. We just thank you for uh, Debbie and Carlos. We just thank you for yes. the pride being removed. We thank you for anxiety and tension leaving the body. Thank you for Marissa, for her brothers to be saved in Jesus' name. Debbie, no more ringing in your ears in Jesus' name. 
Ashley, you're going to have more be fruit of the Spirit than a cornucopia in Jesus' Come on, name. Come healed. on, Hannah. We thank you for your husband coming to know the Lord in Jesus' name. Rhonda, healing in your body physically and emotionally. We thank you for depression being set free from Trinity. Lord, in Jesus' name, thank you for Steve healing of diabetes now yes. in Jesus' name. And Isaiah, even as I'm reading the chat, one of the things the Lord spoke to me was heart palpitations. Some yes. of you in the chat healing, healing. have had heart palpitations and like I felt like the Holy Spirit is going to like Be almost healed. shock your heart tonight. And that's what they do. They put something, a defibrillator to kind of get the rhythm restored. So Father, in Jesus' name, I just pray for anyone in the chat, Lord, having heart palpitations and even those that get this video sent to them and they say, key it up at this time frame because they're praying for you. I just released the supernatural power of Jesus right now. Jesus, usually heart palpitations is something internally yeah, or sometimes it's from anxiety. Lord, it says in Isaiah that you keep in perfect peace those who have their thoughts and their minds fixed on mm. you. So Father, I just pray for peace now. No longer will they wrestle with those thoughts. And Lord, I just pray for their heart to beat in rhythm with yours. I even see this picture of you right now, just like John the Beloved. The Bible says he reclined at the table, laid his head on the chest of Jesus. He could hear the heartbeat of heaven, Come on. literally. So Father, I pray that that would be the the picture they have in their mind. When their heart starts to beat irregularly, all of a sudden they're like, oh, I am right where I'm supposed to be, reclining next to Jesus. My, my head is on his chest. I'm listening to his heartbeat and it's putting mine in rhythm. So Father, we thank you for healing that right now in Jesus' name. We thank you for asthma being healed right now in Jesus' name. Those that feel like, oh gosh, I hate this time of year. I can't run. I can't get outside. All of the things that you feel like you just can't get enough air. I feel the Holy Spirit filling your lungs right now in yes. Jesus' name. You know more inhalers. You're not going to need an inhaler. Some of you, you're going to tomorrow, you're going to go for a run. Or even tonight, you're going to go for a run. You're going to be like, wow, I've been healed. Yes. Put it in the chat when God has touched you. Asthma is going to be healed by the power of Jesus. Let it be a sign and wonder to your family when you go sit at the thanksgiving dinner table all of a sudden they're going to be like dude what's going on? on you were out there playing football you can't do that we've known you your whole life and you're gonna be like man there was this crazy guy praying on a chat somebody sent me this video and i just received the prayer by faith and everything changed i told that pharmacy i don't need another Come refill on. of that inhaler god has opened up my lungs supernaturally so father we thank you in jesus name for yes that. backs lord over Nolan's back, we pray be healed right now. Jesus and we name. just come against all cancers in Gosh, Jesus' name. Cancer. cancer, you will not stay. You must go. In Luke 13, there was a woman with a spirit of infirmity, 18 years bent over, and Jesus delivered her and healed her. We pray right now, any demon attached to sickness, go, go. now in, in Jesus', Jesus name. name. We pray the healing power of God. Guys, we can give you 50 scriptures of how Jesus healed, how healing is for today, how healing is, is your inheritance. That's right. By his stripes, you have been healed. There is healing power. We could give you four hours of testimonies of people <laughs> we've seen supernaturally healed supernaturally healed so god can open open your ears god can open your eyes god can heal you right now cancer you have no power yeah. you've lost your power you must go now so good. the doctors have one jesus report name. but jesus has another report he is our great physician cancer you have no power you must go in jesus name the lord rebukes you come out now every spirit of cancer every physical ailment of cancer maybe it's not a spirit maybe you're just sick in your body well guess what the same god that delivers is the same god that heals come on he wants to heal your body let him touch your body right now in jesus name cancer must go diabetes must go high blood pressure must go right now we just ask god healing right now guys if you have Shit, me and jared are going to be praying for physical healing and then we'll pray for deliverance as our last thing tonight but if you have a physical ailment just type it in the chat. We won't even say your name. We're just going to pray against these things. Panic attacks. We pray against those right now in Jesus' name. Yes. Lord, bring healing over the ligaments, tendons, nerves. Restore blood cells, Lord. Blood pressure, leg pain over care. And God, bring healing right now. Right now, restore. Right now, restore. Every physical infirmity, acid reflux, yeah, high cholesterol. cholesterol. We pray right now, God. Bring Hips. breakthrough, gallstones, bad lungs, discs. skin cancer, Alzheimer's, herniated discs. God, heal backs. Disney heal backs, God. Eczema, bring healing. Allergies. Yes. Uteruses, be healed right yes. now. GI tract issues, God. Be Fatigue, gone. right now. BPD, Kidneys. thyroid issues, right now. In Jesus' High name. Every down. dental issue. We pray, Debbie, your mouth be healed in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Right now, God. We pray healing. Degenerative disc disease. 
We command that to go. Lord, release your healing power right now. Release your healing power over nerve issues, over shoulders that are out of alignment, hips that need to be replaced. God, I pray you'd replace them in Jesus' name. We just I pray, pray God, you, right now. Yes. We just pray right now, Lord, for those that were praying for somebody and they didn't see a miracle, on, Lord. Yes. I just pray right now for hope, God, that they would actually believe your word again, a fresh filling of faith right now, Lord. I just had this person flash in my mind that you were praying for a family member and they did not get healed. And now you're like, God doesn't heal. No, wow. he still heals. He is still healing today. And God, we just pray right now for hope to fill everyone in the chat, Lord, that had believed and didn't see what they were believing. God, I've had those issues. God, yep. Isaiah, we've all prayed for people yes. and hoping and we didn't see it, but it doesn't mean we don't pray. It doesn't mean we don't believe. Some of these things we're going to find out when we get to heaven. We see through a veil darkly or a glass dimly right now. But when we get to heaven, we'll understand all this. But we have to have faith. We have to believe. So, Father, I pray for hope, God, that we would not allow something that happened in the past, one bad experience, one disappointment. I just, Lord, even now, Lord, even those disciples that were on the road to Emmaus, Lord, they were so discouraged because they thought, oh, Jesus didn't rise from the dead. We're here. We're hearing testimonies we're not sure but then jesus showed up and broke off their discouragement and what happened yes. they turned and ran right back to jerusalem a seven mile run in the opposite way so father i pray for that kind of jesus i pray you would meet them right now that you would speak to them right now you, you would say you do have a plan and that you still are the healer that everyone mm. that was brought to you you healed jesus you never turned anybody away you, know you never said like sorry that. your your sin is too great sorry this is because of your own wrongdoing and your bad health choices you healed all that were brought to you mm, so father we good. thank you that you are a god that heals today we thank you for every testimony that i've seen that mm, isaiah has seen so we father we thank you jesus right now that you're walking into living rooms that you're walking into cars that you're walking into hospitals some of you are in the hospital somebody sent you this dream we thank you for the power of jesus christ flooding that room that nurses are going to be like what is that that i'm feeling there is something tangible in in this yes. room. So Father, we thank you for healing autism. We thank you for healing yes. the incurable diseases. Nothing's impossible for Jesus. Everything must bow to the name of Come Jesus on. Christ. Everything on earth, everything in heaven and under the earth, we thank you, Jesus, that you are healed. You just type in the chat, if you believe in this prayer, that you believe you're receiving your healing, just type, I receive my healing in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, we pray for those that have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, Father, Come we pray on. you would baptize them right now. Sure, Jesus God, said, if you being you. evil know how to give good gifts, how much more does your heavenly Father want to give the Holy Spirit to them that That's ask? Good. So we know by what Jesus said, it's God's desire, let me say this slowly, for you to have the Holy Spirit. He wants to baptize you. Now, I don't want to get into a whole teaching here, but there was a, one thing to be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise when you believe. It's another thing to be baptized in the Holy it's Spirit. Good. We see a distinguishing thing in the book of Acts where, yes, you are sealed when you believe. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit. But then in the book of Acts, Jesus said, wait in Jerusalem till the Holy Spirit comes upon yes. you, till you're baptized yes. in the Holy Spirit. And we know you can be continually baptized because in the book of Acts, they were baptized more than once in the Holy Spirit. So let's pray that, that you would be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Father, right now, we ask you to fill us with your Holy Spirit. Yes. Someone type in the chat, fill me with the Holy Spirit. And then I want you to say it as we're praying, Lord, fill me right now with your Holy Spirit. Holy Just put your hands out like you're receiving a gift and say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit right now. We pray, be Sorry. baptized in the Holy Spirit. Some of you will begin to pray in tongues as you get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Some of you will just feel lightheaded. Some of you will feel a tingle. Some of you will feel nothing. Just because you don't feel anything doesn't mean you didn't get baptized in the Holy Spirit. But what happens is you're going to notice a new boldness about you. You're going to notice a conviction for sin. You're going to notice a compassion towards the lost. You're going to notice you're up at night praying. You're in the, up in the morning praying. You're, why, why am I like this? Come well, on. now because you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you shall receive Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Power. power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So, Father, right now I pray you fill every single person. 
Kim bara mando bosam diara mando bosan kam diara mando bosete. I pray, Holy Spirit, fill them yes. right now. We're praying in tongues. We're not speaking in tongues. We're, we're not interpreting. We're not in a church service like First Corinthians 14 tells us. We are in a prayer meeting. If you didn't know, look at the title. And we're praying in tongues. The Bible says to pray in the Spirit, it builds you up. The Bible says when you don't know what to pray, pray in the Spirit, and yes. the Spirit will intercede for you. The Bible says when you pray in the Spirit, no one can understand you. You're speaking directly to God. So this is not an interpretation prayer tongue. This is or speaking in tongues. This is a prayer tongue. So just begin to pray in the spirit. If you can't, just ask the Lord to fill you right now. Yes. Some of you are going to feel it bubble up like in John chapter 7. Some of you are going to fill your mouth. All of a sudden, just begin to flutter and like you want to say something. Just open your mouth. Let the Holy Spirit pray so out of good. you. So good. Father, right now, fill them. Fill them in Jesus' name. Lord, fill every single person in Jesus' name. I pray rivers, according to John chapter yes, 7, rivers water. of living water would flow. Rivers of living water would flow. Those that thirst and those that hunger. Out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water. Flow right now, Holy Spirit, we pray. We pray, Holy Spirit, flow. Flow in Jesus' name. Flow in Jesus' name. Do what only you can do, Lord. Open eyes, open ears, open yes. wombs. Those that are infertile, I pray, God, they would be fertile. I pray they'd be fruitful and multiply. Lord, right now, and don't believe the religious lie that God doesn't want you to have this. Don't believe the religious lie that this is like demonic. Don't believe the religious lie that this isn't for today. Don't believe the religious lie this is gibberish. The mm -hmm. devil's made up so many lies. dumb lies that you guys believe because some religious teacher told you, oh, that's just gibberish. Oh, that's that's because maybe they were disappointed they didn't get it or yeah. maybe because they you know grew up in a church where it was abused. But I'm telling you right now, it's real. The Holy Spirit is alive. So good. Millions of people. The charismatic movement is the largest, fastest growing movement in Christianity. Right. I think there's over 500 million charismatic, something crazy like that. So I'm telling you right now, the Holy Spirit is alive and well. He's moving. Your religious pastor is not going to stop him. A religious YouTuber is not going to stop him with their 90 view video. The Holy <laughs> Spirit is alive, moving, praying yes. through his people. So repent of unbelief, repent of doubt, repent of blaspheming and saying, oh, that's wrong or this isn't. Go to your Bible and say, oh, yeah, look, it says we should pray in the Holy Spirit always. It says praying in the Spirit is powerful. It says it's working out when I pray in the Spirit. Lord, we just pray. Touch yes. him right now. Take over, Lord, right now. Break the unbelief. Break the unbelief, God. Break this religious spirit off the church. Yeah, the religious good. spirit wants to put handcuffs on the Holy Ghost, wants to stop the Holy Spirit. I pray you would break it right now. Look at yes. guys, we just jumped to 3,000 people. We're on oh, some yes. type of trending page. I don't know what. But the Holy Spirit is moving. Fill him right now, Lord. Come on, just begin to pray, chat. Yes. Chat, Thank my you, Lord. dad, the day he was saved, he ran to the altar, gives his life to Christ, had never been in a church a day in his life, starts getting prayed for as he's surrendering. All of a sudden, he was baptized in the Holy Come Spirit, on. immediately starts praying in tongues. Is like, what was Come that? On. The pastor says, brother, you were just filled with the Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. He goes, can I stop doing that? Like, <laughs> is it going to just turn on and turn off? And my dad's like... The guy's like, yes, absolutely, you can you can control it. It has become the life source for my father. She it has become the life source second. for our family. You need to be able to be filled with the Spirit. I don't know how people do it without the Holy Ghost. Mom. I need that fresh infilling. So just reach out by faith. Here's the thing. If you overthink about it and you try to, you're going to complicate it. You got to have faith like a child. Jesus is like, hey, see these children? That's the kind of faith that you need to have. You need to have faith like a child. Children don't worry. Children aren't worried about bills. They're not trying to figure things out. They know that their father is going to provide, and a good, and your father gives you this good gift. So just receive it like a child. Just receive it like your father is going to give it to you simply Gee, because you ask. So, yes. Father, we thank Fill you for them, the God. Spirit. We thank you for the fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. For those, Lord, that have been discouraged, that they went, I even, even went to church camps, and you felt 
felt bad because you didn't get filled, even tonight, God's going to fill you. Tonight, he's going to give you the tongue, going to give you the gift of tongues. Tonight, he's going to give you what you have always yes. desired. We just release that now in Jesus' yes, name. Yes, Lord, break laziness off of us, God. Our lack of prayer, our Shut lack of commitment. Up, I even pray, God, that you just begin to deliver people oh, right now. So Guys, we've prayed for, for marriages. Me. we prayed for families. we prayed against unbelief. we prayed baptism of the Holy Spirit. we prayed for healing. We're just going to pray right now as our last thing to pray for, and then we're going to talk, hang out, have fun, and maybe make Nico laugh in the back. But we're going to pray right now that there would be deliverance. Yes, deliverance. Break the power of the enemy. We are not these soft, watered-down, lukewarm, malnourished, Baskin Robbins, Burger King, Hometown Buffet, McDonald's Ooh. type of Christians, yo-yo back and forth, Come on. you know, whitewashed tombs, casket type Come Christians. On, Davion, we are armed and you. dangerous. We're armed and dangerous. We're not afraid of the devil. Let's We've go. been given power and authority over him. We're not afraid of him. We're not afraid of exposing him. We're not afraid of casting him out. And we're on the front lines. We're not on the sidelines. Come on, this is not a cruise ship. This is a battleship. Yeah. We're not here at a carnival cruise going down water slide baptism here. We are praying that the eat. devil would leave you in Jesus' name. Every foul spirit, I put you on notice. Yep. I bind you in Jesus' name. Showtime you have no power. Yourself. You have no authority. The Lord rebukes you, Satan. We cast you out now oh, in yeah. Jesus' Show name. The blood is against you right now. Every foul spirit, you are bound in Jesus' name. We command you out of their mouth and into the abyss now. Go now. Leave in Jesus' name. Go. Every foul spirit must leave right now. Come out of them. Loose them. You have no power. Be loosed in Jesus' name. Be loosed in Jesus' name. Every spirit must go. We bind you in Jesus' name. We bind you. Okay. We bind you in Jesus' name. I know, guys, our connection's red here. Are we still live, though? We bind you in Jesus. Look at it. Right as we start praying deliverance, our connection wow. goes out. We bind you in Jesus' name. Satan, you have no power. I bind the spirit of lust now. I bind the spirit of lust in Jesus' name. Every demon that came in through trauma, that came in through rape, that came in through masturbation, in that came Jesus in through abuse, name. go now in Jesus' name. Get up and out now. You have no power. Cool, you have no authority. Cool, 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 the Lord is against cool, cool, cool. you, Satan. I don't come in my name. I come in Christ's name. In Jesus' name, right. every foul spirit, every unclean spirit so must go right now. Yes. Must go right now in Jesus' name. Go, every trauma spirit, every yes. spirit that came in through trauma, come out now oh, in Jesus' yes. name. Every spirit of resentment, oh, yes. every spirit of oh, anger, oh, violence, oh, rage. Oh, Some of you just, out, oh, your Sonia blood boils now. and you're ra you rage. I command that spirit of rage, go now in Jesus' name. Come out, come out, out in Jesus' name. Rebellion, go now. Stubbornness, go now. Every spirit of self-will and disobedience, the Lord rebukes you, Satan. You've lost this battle. Mm. I want you to tell these demons, they've been messing with you for way too long. It's time to get a little bit of Hispanic and fight in you and tell those demons, get out in Jesus' name. I, I want you to tell them this. I'm not your home. You must leave. In Matthew 12, Jesus said, demons call us their home. Come on. Take it personal. Say, no, I'm not your home. I'm crashing your stock market, Satan. Get out of me now. Every spirit will be homeless tonight. Every demon must go. Every demonic power must be broken. The blood is against you. In Jesus' name, I command you to come up and out right now. Leave my body. This is a temple of the Holy Spirit. You can't stay here. It's good. You can't stay here. Come out now, rebellious spirit. Go in Jesus' name. Every spirit of rejection. You walk into rooms, you feel rejected, you hear voices, people don't like you, people don't love you, you're never going to be, you never, spirit of rejection, go. go in Jesus' name. Spirit of rejection, go in Jesus' name. Spirit of accusation, criticism, go right now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of witchcraft, go now Jesus in Jesus' name. Every spirit causing confusion, go now. Every bloodline, every spirit in your bloodline, ancestral demon, we command you to go now in Jesus' name. We're not playing with you, Satan. You must go in Jesus Christ's name. The blood is against you. We command you up and out right now in Jesus' name. Up and out right now in Jesus' name. Go now in oh, Jesus' yes, name. Humble. Guys, if you get kicked oh, yeah. out, just refresh. It just kicked 700 people out. I just checked. So the server is messing up. Just refresh. We're here. We're going to keep praying. People will come back as they feel led. Right now, God, break these spirits of jealousy. Go now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Depression, you must go. Go, come out, oh, yes. out of their mouth, into the abyss. Depression, anxiety, discouragement. You're always discouraged. Lethargy, laziness, go now. Hopelessness, go now. Jesus death, name. go now. In Jesus' name, spirit of death, you must go. You must go. All heaviness, you must go. Yes. All burden, all gloom, you must go in Jesus' name. The blood is against you, Satan. You cannot have these people. These are children of God. 
We are not yours. Right. We are an army. We are not prisoners. The Lord is releasing. I hear the Lord saying this. I'm releasing the prisoners of war. Come on. I'm releasing the prisoners of war. Yes. There's POWs in the chat. You've been taken captive from in Satan's kingdom. But God says, I've transferred you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Yes. Satan, let him go now in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Go, yes. let him go. Loose them. Loose them in Jesus' name. Right now, every spirit attached to mental illness, go now. In Schizophrenia, Jesus mania, insanity, madness, DID, ADHD, OCD, whatever it is, Come whatever on. D, A, B, C, doesn't matter. Any demon attached to mental illness. Am I saying every mental illness is a demon? Of course not. Am I saying everything is demonic? Of course not. But there are demons that are tormenting you and the doctors are not going to tell you it's a demon. They're going to tell you it's a mental illness. Mm. What else are they going to say? That's They're just doing what they've been trained to do. There's nothing wrong with them. They just aren't going to say, oh, that's a demon. Go to the deliverancemap.com. No doctor will ever say that. But here as Christians, we're pastors, we're leaders. We're not going to put up with the devil messing with our with God's people. Go now. Every spirit of bipolar. One day you're happy. One day you're mad. One moment you're cool. You just lose your temper. Mm. That spirit must go in Jesus' name. All confusion right now, all deception right now, every mind-bending spirit, go now. Go now in Jesus' name. Spirit of pride, go now in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' name. Every spirit of greed, every discontent spirit right now, spirit of perfection, pride, vanity, ego, go in Jesus' yes, name. Jesus go name. in Jesus' name. You have no power. Father, we just pray, deliver your people. Deliver your people. Infirmity right now in Jesus' name. Every mental Shut curse, up, every God. generational curse it. is broken. Oh, yeah. Come on, just say it right now. I break the curse in Jesus' name. The curse is broken in Jesus' name. Every occult spirit right now, go in Jesus' name. Every occult spirit, every spirit attached to cults, Jehovah's Witness, Mormonism, Islam, these are all cults. We break that spirit now. That false teaching, go now. Every religious spirit that's causing me to be ritualistic, we command that to go right now in Jesus' name. Get out. Right now, freedom in Jesus' name. The blood is against you, Satan. We just pray, Holy Spirit, yes. do what only you can do. Thank sure, you, Lord. Cool, restore, cool, 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 restore cool, minds cool. and hearts, God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Father, and we power. just thank you right now in Jesus' name. We just allow you full access to our mind right now. And we just thank you that we, I just declare it, you have the mind of Christ yes. in Jesus' name. No longer will you have, some of you have been hearing thoughts and hearing lies, and you feel like I've just, the voices are incessant. God is delivering you yes. from the voices in your head right now in Jesus' name. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, that the voices would be silent, that, Lord, they would only hear your voice right now in Jesus' name. So, Father, we just break the power of the enemy. We say that he, nobody will listen to you any longer. That's a part of this chat. We just thank you, God, Lord, that your voice will echo. Your voice will be loud. Your voice will be magnified. Just like John turned in Revelation and said, I saw him and his voice was the sound of trumpets, many waters, Lord. And I just pray that that's how they would feel now yes. in Jesus' name. Yes, fill them with the Holy Spirit, God. We just pray name. right now that they'd be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Your anointing would flow. Come your power on. would flow. Your fire would flow right now. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. Yes. We just pray baptism of power, baptism of fire. Lord, use every person that's been here. I know we've been praying almost an hour and a half. Wow, it flies by. We pray wow. that, God, you would use them for your honor and for your glory. Every single yeah, person in the good. chat right now, God, we pray we'd use them for your honor and your glory. And then last thing, before we answer some questions, hang out with the chat for a few minutes and you guys can give and partner. And I'm going to sow into Jared tonight so you guys can sow into that as well. Last thing is, God, I pray that you would enlist every believer in here, that they would be warriors for your kingdom. They'd be prayer warriors, deliverance warriors, healing warriors, uh, warriors for revival, whatever it is. We're not warriors, we're warriors. <laughs> we're not wimps, we're warriors. Good. We're, not, we're not sissies here, guys. We are warriors. We're not going to apologize for the passion. We're not going to apologize for the fire. We're not going to apologize for what God is doing, for being radical. No apology. The devil isn't apologizing to you. Yeah. He's not like, sorry for addicting you for so many years. The devil is a liar. Preach. And tonight, we just say we're not apologizing. We're not apologizing. We're breaking the devil's power. We're praying for a fresh anointing and a fresh fire. God, enlist them tonight. Yes. Enlist them. Is there any closing prayer you want to pray, Jared, before we yeah. just hang out and talk to the chat for a bit? Yeah. Thank you, Father, for... Um for all those that have just been delivered, Lord, we just thank you as they've been set free and delivered. Now they're filled with the Spirit, yes. that nothing else is coming in. The only access they give to a Spirit is the Holy Spirit yes. now in Jesus' name. 
And so, Father, I thank you. I just thank you for new rhythms and new patterns and, Lord, establishing establishing a healthy habit that first thing in the morning, God, before they look at their social media, before they look at their messages, before they turn on um, the news, God, I pray that they would open up the word and spend time in your presence, that they would learn to long to be there with you, God, that they would have this deep level of communion and intimacy with you. Father, I pray, Lord, and I just release that right now, a hunger, a supernatural desire. Lord, Matthew 4, when Jesus was tempted by the devil, he the devil comes to Jesus and says, hey, take these rocks that already have an original purpose and change it suitable for your, for mm. your own needs. No longer are we going to look for substitutes. We're going to listen to the word of God. We're going to live off of every word that flows continually from your mouth. So God, I pray that tomorrow morning, Lord, there would be this unsatiable appetite. They would be like animals coming out of hibernation saying, I just need God. I just need more of him. So God, I pray that that would happen, Lord. I pray that there'd be a powerful impartation now, Lord. The hunger that I have, that I, every morning that I wake up with, God, Lord, the hunger that my father has, the hunger that my grandfather has, that my great-grandfather have, I just release into them now the impartation to hunger and thirst after you. The Bible says, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. So, Father, I thank you now in Jesus' name for filling them with fresh hunger and fresh desire for your word. Yes, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. An hour and a half prayer, bro. Ooh, come on. That was fire. Guys, do you enjoy these prayer streams? I could, I could do this for five hours. I love oh, the praying love and just being led by the Holy Spirit and letting the Holy Spirit speak and do what he wants to do. What an amazing time. Unfortunately, well, we had an amazing crowd. We hit 3,000. Unfortunately, we kicked like 700 people out when it dropped network. But it is what it is. They're coming back in. We have 2,000 in coming in right now. Facebook was glitched the first half of the video. We had um, Facebook saying that we had zero viewers, even though I was on my phone seeing tons of people in the chat. Wow. So I think it's fixed now. Doesn't oh. matter, guys. We're going to keep pushing through. We're going to keep pressing. Let us know if you guys want us to do more of these streams. Nico, I want you to put up the giving code as well. I want to sow into Jared's ministry tonight. If you guys were blessed by his ministry, I don't want to dine and dash. I want to make sure we sow into him. We did a lot of teaching tonight as well, not just praying, but I'm going to be sowing into him regardless. So if you guys want to partner with us monthly, you do get 70 sermons, 20% off the merch store, all that good stuff. You can partner down below or in the comments. But right now, we're going to hang out with the chat, maybe make Nico laugh in the back Come on. and uh, see what we can do here. But... Someone said, do more. This was good. You guys can give there. Let us know too. Did you watch the cooking stream? Okay, let's talk about quickly the cooking stream. Because <laughs> yes. I think a lot of people thought... You were, we were preach yeah, during the they, cooking. They, first of all, people were saying, <laughs> bro, people were like, why aren't you preaching while you're cooking? I'm like, dude. You're you were beating chickens. I was, and I was <laughs> literally... I have 1,600 preaching videos. The cooking stream was actually supposed to be a comedy stream. It was yes. more to have fun and laugh. People thought I was trying to be like master chef and take it super serious. The girls were very serious, yes. even though we won. praise the Lord they lost. But hey, they're watching here, so we got to be careful because you know we, we're going to go home and share a bed with them. But um, <laughs> they, we were laughing, guys. We were joking. We were having fun. People were genuinely concerned for me. They're like, you've never cracked an egg. What's wrong with you? It's like, <laughs> I have, but I'm just messing around. I'm having fun. Of course, I don't cook, and that was my first time really cooking. But people just took it so serious. They were back. They were backseat cooking the whole time. We had a bunch of backseat chefs. What were you saying, Mamma Mia? I was saying, yeah. <laughs> I kept saying Mamma Mia, and people were saying, "How many times does Isaiah say Mamma Mia?" And I kept saying it. But it was super fun uh, for those that liked it. They liked it. We're gonna definitely do it again. Maybe next time. Yeah, Grace, the sugar helped the sauce. Yes. That's right. Yeah. We panicked, guys. Our Alfredo sauce. It went sour. I think, I think we, garlicky. I yeah, think I we had too much garlic. We had too much par, too much garlic and too much <laughs> parmesan, parmesan cheese. <laughs> the crust was like it, it was, was like. So then someone over. in the chat said add sugar and I added sugar and ended up winning. I was scared. I'm like, wait, I think they're trying to sabotage. Yeah, us. the sugar was the key, but it was super fun. It was hilarious. Um, I think it has like 30 something thousand views, which is crazy. So people did enjoy it, but we were losing network. I, I need to get a new laptop before we do it again because we kept losing network. Our frames were dropping. I get irritated, man, whenever uh, that stuff happens. So someone said to Nico model in the past. Well, this isn't Nico. This is Jared. <laughs> <laughs> Nico, Nico's, Nico's sitting behind the computer laughing right now, as you can hear him. He's like, thank you. But, uh, Nico, <laughs> guys, we are going to do something hilarious tonight. <laughs> There's Jared's laugh. Oh, it's starting. The Bethel Joy Bombs no, no, are hitting no, no, us. No, no, no. The Bethel Joy Bombs are hitting us. Turn me off. Um, 
Oh, oh yeah, my cake pot fingers. That was so oh, funny, my dude. Gosh. My fingers were drumsticks. Look like you had corn dogs at the end of your <laughs> fingers. Nico, uh, we are going to put a uh, camera on Nico tonight with yes. just his head down and just his body where you can't see his face laughing. Because people in the chat were like, please don't show us Nico. We just want that laugh to be oh. mysterious. So Nico is the laugh behind the camera. Well, he's behind a desk with like five huge monitors in front of him, but he's running a warship oh. right now as we stream. But yeah, that was hilarious. Garlic gets put in last. Don't cook it long. Yeah, well, we put in. We messed up. And but then we it, won. And people were mad that I trimmed out the part where I was crying about onions because when we started the stream, I didn't know what we were going to do. I was just like, hey, I'm here for it. And they put down an onion in front of me. And guys, chopping onions. You guys, he <laughs> had like an allergic reaction I, I, to the I, seeing I, the onion. Dude, I had a mental breakdown. I was like, no, no, take I it away. I didn't know that Isaiah needed deliverance oh, until man. the onion came out. He started manifesting oh, live that on the onion, stream. That like, onion spirit. I can't do this. But yeah, I, I literally, this. if you cut onions around me, my eyes will burn for like eight hours. It's pretty much cutting onions to me is getting pepper sprayed. It's like the same. And uh, I have some type of allergic reaction to onions. I'm not kidding. I'm, now I feel like I'm defending myself again. But I trim that part out because no one wants to see me crying oh, about onions. Man. My wife is so mad. She's like, why did you trim that out? But yeah, onions and me. But you know what? When I was crying about the onions, I can't cut onions. Someone in the chat was like, I'm the same way. So I felt better. I felt better even though I was being a little baby. It was a bot. Yeah. <laughs> One guy was like, I hope Isaiah is not this. I don't know what he said, like something all the time, but it was Thanks, funny. Mom. My mom said, I love the laugh the most. Wait, I love your laugh the most because I loved it first. Oh, thank oh, you, mom. You're so sweet, sweet in the chat. Yeah, and everyone, <laughs> every, everybody was mad that I didn't wear my apron. <laughs> Listen, oh, guys, yeah, I have the all these heresy hunters out here making videos about me. That's the last thing I need is me in an apron on a thumbnail, okay? <laughs> we got we got to hold some stuff back from them. We can't give them that. Oh, Nico is that. married. His wife in the chat let them know he's yeah, married. Yeah, uh, Nico's wife said, hey, tell them Nico's married. Yeah, <laughs> I know you guys want to hear that laugh all the time, that beautiful <laughs> laugh. People said your laugh was like an evil um, an evil genius, Jared, when you're laughing thought, at the cake box. I just thought of, like, people recording Nico's laugh and, like... <laughs> Some lonely women <laughs> just playing They love his the laugh, laugh in the back. Can she's you like, eat onion? I hate like, onion. I need a man to laugh at my jokes. So I'm going to play Nico's recording. <laughs> Nico's dying right now. I wish you brought the baby, Nico. Sorry, Stevie. I'm sorry, Stevie. <laughs> we'll, we'll mute his laugh. The heresy. Some men, women have fantasies. The funniest part is I don't even know half the time what he's laughing at. <laughs> I think last time we had a guest, I was like, your goal is to make Nico laugh. And he, Nico, me saying that made Nico laugh. And the guy was like, well, this is easy. Oh. Exposing Isaiah Salvar, he used the wrong seasoning. Bro, I'm, uh, yeah, unfortunately, JP, that video is probably going to get clipped up and used against me somehow. But you oh. can't do anything without people being negative. People are like, oh, they were mad that we were having fun. Yeah. I'm like, why do you hate fun? Tell your face Gosh. to smile. Yes, please. Get the Lord towel, Jesus. Nico. What does that mean? Oh, <laughs> get the towel. Yeah. I got it. It's a bounty towel. Yeah, so. people get mad when we laugh and have fun. I don't understand it. It's like, are you, are you just on. not happy ever? Religious spirit. That right is there. so wrong. Laugh out loud. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, we'll literally pray for an hour and a half, and then people will be like, "Why aren't you guys still praying?" It's like, you're, dude, we prayed for an hour and a half. The spirit. Yeah, She's having fun. Obsessed. I wish that I wish you were. This is how spiritual. bad some people are. <laughs> some people are so bad. What happened? What are you laughing at? Let me zoom in on Jared. <laughs> no, what no, happened? No. <laughs> I'm zooming on Jared. You got to laugh in the mic, though, bro. We got to hear the laugh. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go to my live tab. It was the oh, cooking stream. Yes, live cooking. Great. Chickens. What do eagle eye? <laughs> oh, we got to tell your fishing story, dude. Oh. Yeah, oh. we got to tell the story of you oh. and your dad fishing. Yeah. All right. Oh, man, my cheeks are already oh. hurting. My cheeks are hurting. Okay, so, yeah, this is not spiritual. So, everybody that's taking notes, you can put your pins For down. For all the spiritual people, <laughs> they're point one. They're like, what did he say? Oh, What's my cheeks hurt. <laughs> Oh, okay. So I was going fishing uh, when I was in high school. My dad would take us fishing at a lake, night fishing. Isaiah, put yourself I, back I on stop. the camera. You put this yourself you. back on the camera. So we'd go night fishing. So we would uh, <laughs> anchor. We would anchor. Right we would anchor and put some lights in the water. And then we would fish from like 6 p.m. I and can't. then I can't, dude. Stop. <laughs> I can't do it. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. He goes, stop, dude. So we would fish, and then you would fish till probably 10 o'clock, and then everybody would fall asleep. And then 
you're ca- we're catching trout for those that are curious. We're catching rainbow trout. So um, I wake up, everybody crashes. Me and my dad and my and my brother, we all fall asleep. And I wake up at one thirty in the morning, and all the lines are tangled <laughs> because some one fish, you know, bit the line and spun around. So I reel in everybody's pole, and around these drop around these drop lights are these big giant fish called carp. If Explain you know, to them what carp okay, are if they don't so know. So if you don't know what a carp is, a carp is a bottom feeding sucker fish. It's got these big old lips. They're ugly. They're full of bones. Ugh. You can't even eat carp. People say the best way to cook carp is to take a piece of wood, <laughs> put it on a barbecue, b- burn the fish, and then eat the wood. You know, you don't even eat the fish <laughs> because it's full of bones. It's like this. You eat the wood instead. So that's how you cook carp. Okay. So if you I was it, like, where are you going with the barbecue? Yeah, yeah. So so I see one of these giant like 30 pound carp <laughs> swimming around the light. Okay. And they don't eat the same they don't eat the same power. They don't eat the same uh, bait as a trout. So what they eat is bread. So I take a little bread ball. This and is I the middle did. of the night. Everyone's asleep. It's one thirty in the morning. Every, Nico, my dad's stop. snoring. Hold on. We gotta wait till Nico's done laughing. Hold on, dude. Hold on. Nico's having a panic attack over here. So, so we I drop a that. piece of bread in the water. So you put bread on the hook? No, no, no. I Not just yet. drop okay. the bread in the water and I watch. All of a sudden, this carp opens its mouth and swallows the bread. <laughs> and I get this bright idea. I'm like, I know what I can do. I am going to take my dad's hook put bread on it and drop it down and act like i'm asleep and then my dad's gonna hook this 30 pound carp think it's the biggest fish of his life and i'm i'm such a rebellious child so i drop it down i fall back asleep go in my little sleeping bag and then all of a sudden my dad's fishing pole does this like literally like (laughs) my dad pops up Oh, oh, son. Oh, and he goes to grab his fishing pole and it snaps in half. <laughs> just pole, breaks. His fishing pole? Just breaks in half. His line breaks and he's like, oh, son, it was the biggest <laughs> trout of my life. It just broke my line. Because and I'm like, oh, no, dad, it wasn't a trout. <laughs> so, I'm so his sorry. Line, his pole <laughs> broke. <laughs> it broke my dad's favorite fishing pole. And he looks at me, he's like, son, that was the biggest trout of my life. I could have put it up on the walls. Like, dad, it wasn't a trout. <laughs> it was a... Dude, Nico's you, you... died. <laughs> Nico's died. Dude. Dad, oh dad, it was a carp. Was he a... said, carp doesn't eat power bait, son. For Like, that's what trout eat. I had power bait on, son. I said, no, dad. I reeled in your pole and put bread on your hook and dropped it down. And he said, why? Why would you do that, son? I said, I don't know, dad. Oh, my cheeks hurt, dude. I don't know. Oh, I can't breathe. My dad never. Oh, I'm going to throw up. He never took me fishing again. (laughs) So... Uh, why would you do that, why son? Why would you do that, son? Oh, oh man. Oh, praise the Lord. That's hilarious. Someone yeah. said, "Stop it, Nico." Oh, dude. Oh. I'm literally sweating from laughing. Oh my God. Broke your dad's paw. Switched out his oh. bait. Oh, hey. So I have another story. So, <laughs> yes, so <enough>. my. <laughs> Nico, dude. So, hey, this I is great. Dude. So for you what parents is, in there a that in this room. So for you parents in there that um. You need to just extend grace to your children when they start driving, okay? I'm going to tell you a story about me. I I had my driver's license when I was in high school. My dad bought me this, like, $2,000, like, hot rod, supposedly, and it was called a Dodge Dart, and I was putting money in this thing, and it kept breaking down. Like, I blew up the transmission, like, tell six, him, seven tell times. Tell about the transmission guy. Yeah, so... So I had a, I took my transmission to a shop because I would pull it out myself. And the transmission guy goes, Hey, I got a deal for you, kid. I'll give you a lifetime warranty on this transmission. I'm going to re. I'm going to rebuild this thing. It's going to be so strong. It's going to be tough as nails. And then all you have to do is if it ever breaks, you just, you pull it out yourself, bring it to me, and I'll replace it. All the parts free of charge. So. After the fifth time that I brought it to him, he's like, hey, kid, sorry, man. Like, I'm losing money. 
<laughs> I'm losing my I'm losing my business here because you keep you blow this transmission every week. And so it was one of those times that my transmission was broke. And uh, I went to my dad. It's like, Dad, I need to borrow mom's minivan. And he goes, son, you know, same dad. I broke his fishing pool. You know, he's not in a good mood. Son, you keep breaking your car. What's wrong with you? I was like, Dad, I. You know, and I drove it really rough because I thought it was a hot rod. I was like, Dad, I drive it like a grandma. I don't know what's happening. You know, I'm totally lying. He's like, well, this is the last time you are, this is the last time you're borrowing your mother's car. And I'm like, why, Dad? He goes, because you need to get your car fixed and just drive it. I was like, fine, Dad, that's it. And I grab the car keys, <laughs> go over into the carport, and I start my mom's Ford And he told you, like, you better not yeah. mess this car up. This is our only car or something. This is, yeah, so he was warning me, you know, don't drive it like you drive your Dodge Dart. So I start my mom's Vinnie van, and I'm like, I'll show him. It's Friday night. <laughs> Dude. And I step on the gas, <laughs> and I got about 20 feet, and all of a sudden, crunch! <laughs> and I backed up into my dad's truck. No. And in I, your mom's minivan. Yes. You wrecked I, your mom's minivan, your dad's truck, and your car. My dad's truck from his front fender <laughs> all the way to the gas tank. He couldn't even open up his driver's no. door. And I had to go inside and face the music. I walk in like a dog with his tail between his legs, like, Dad, don't kill me. He's like, what? You didn't wreck the car, did you? <laughs> You're like, no, I didn't wreck my car. I wrecked my car, Mom's car, and your car. I was like, Dad, please don't kill me. And then he goes, how bad is it? I was like, oh, it's bad, Dad. <laughs> it's so bad. So... I just want to get. I'm still alive, praise the Lord. Oh, man. Oh. So you go out there, your mom's car's wrecked, your dad's <sighs> car's wrecked. And my whole life was wrecked after that. It was like my Friday night was ruined. Dude. My dad, he's got. Oh, he's like man. Jesus. You and your I mean, he Friday forgave me. <laughs> yes. Your Friday night? Yeah. That was the worst part. I couldn't go anywhere. Your poor dad. I couldn't go anywhere. I was stuck at home with two cars wrecked and a, and a mad dad. The best is a transmission guy saying, I'm going to give you a lifetime Time warranty. Works. And then he's like, I can't give you a... I can't keep fixing this. I'm going to go out of business. Dude. Oh. Didn't you tell, tell him about how you guys... Were, you broke your transmission so many times, you guys... I'm going to start spinning everywhere. You guys got so good at fixing it. Your yeah. friends would come over and everyone knew what Everybody bolt. Everybody had their own bolt, yeah. I'd be like, hey, guys, come on over again. Johnny, you take bolt number five. Billy, you're on so top of bolt number six. And everybody would get out there and they're like, everybody would just wrench on it. We're like, hey, this is cool. They were so used to fixing the transmission, oh. they knew what bolt to go yeah, to. Yeah, they knew how to pull it out really quickly. Oh, man, I can't breathe, dude, oh. my cheeks. Nico, you're going to get sick oh, back there. Gosh. I kid you not, the last time you were on the stream and we laughed like this, I felt sick all night. My stomach was so sore. The next day, yeah, my stomach, my abs were hurting. dude, my abs were hurting. I felt like I got hit by a car. I was laughing so much. Where's oh. the prayer night? It's rewind an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said, where's the <laughs> Everybody, they turn it in. They're like, wait, I got demons. What's going on? Why are they laughing at me? This is, guys, we just ended the prayer stream. It was an hour and a half or an hour and 41 minutes in. This is live. Yes. So Lord. you got to rewind. This is the end of the stream where we hang out and talk. Oh, man, got, my cheeks are. I, I got a confession. So my first, oh, year no. as a, my, oh, no. my first year as a youth pastor, this is 2007. Some of you weren't even Get born Get it off yet. your chest here, yeah, bro, on confess, the show. Confession. We should start so, a comedy podcast once a week. That'd be I, so funny. Yeah, let's go. So I, this, now don't judge me, okay, but um, one, of my, one of my wife's cousins, Riley, if you're watching this, God bless you, um, <laughs> she had this, she had this, she had this amazing touch from the Lord watching Facing the Giants. Now, if you've never seen it, it's a kind of a cheesy Christian movie, all right, and, but it, God really spoke to her and touched her, and she's like, we need the youth to watch this movie, so I was like, all right, we're going to do a movie night. So I went to the kids. I'm like, hey, what do you guys want to drink? Now, this is pre all of the um, studies that went out that um, energy drinks are bad for yes, kids. Preach. So I go to the go to Costco and buy two cases of monster energy drinks. No. Yes. And I'm leading junior high students, and we're going to have a movie night. Guys, this is terrible. Do not try this at home. No, this He's is He's telling yeah, you warning. what not to do. This Listen, is youth pastor this is confessions. confessions. Youth pastor confessions. So... I buy energy drinks 
for all these junior high kids. I pass them out like some kids are like, can I have two? I said, let's just finish your first one first. And so we turn, we turn on this, we turn on this movie facing the giants and these kids are chugging this energy drink. And then in about eight minutes, it looked like a bomb went off in that room. Kids are jumping up and down Dude. in their seats. Dude. Kids are doing Dude. cartwheels. We need a camera for Nico. Nico's dying. Kids are asking to run around the church. They're so like, Pastor, Pastor. And all of a sudden, my 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 wife's cousin is sitting there crying because her movie night was ruined. Nobody's watching it. The Kids demonic are running 666 around. energy drinks. And then the, then the kid, like when a kid comes in, he's like, Pastor, Pastor, my heart's beating really fast. <laughs> Dude, that's so wrong. And I was like... God, don't let anybody die. <laughs> don't let anybody die. It's my first year as a pastor. Oh, no. I can't. So we like had everybody calm down and like everybody just sit there and kids are like, I can't sit still, pastor, you know, and they're just running. So anyways, the fact that you go ahead. So anyways, I learned my lesson that you cannot do a movie night with monster energy drinks. That's hilarious, so, especially listen. watching Facing the Giants. <laughs> yeah, so so bad. It felt so bad. Poor she, Riley never poor got to Riley, the movie. Poor Riley. She wanted everybody to have the counter with the Lord watching the movie. So the youth pastor stories. Some of these oh, stories gosh. we can't even talk about on stream because yeah. there's some some That's stuff that happens in the one. in the and youth group. Don't hate me. Don't like you tried to kill kids. <laughs> no, I didn't know. Like they were just brand, monster energy drinks were brand new. We thought they were like a <laughs> doctor. So Pepper or Mountain Dew or something. Dude. We're like, okay. So all the moms in the chat are like, you'll never. Oh, you know, I'm man. gonna ba- ba- uh, revoke your ministry license. Someone said story time with Jared. Stevie said that. Yeah, I dude, got my more. cheeks hurt so bad. I got another one. Okay, so right, last go one. Ahead. You last got one. And the then you, some of you need to sew right now yeah. in this chat, man. You haven't laughed Slow like down. this. Okay, so I was really mean to my little brother when we were growing up, and. Uh, one of the things. This is confession we, time with Jared, guys. This is part of the healing process. You guys remember that we prayed earlier in the chat, Lord, search my heart. So yeah. I'm getting Someone some said stuff heresy out. hunters are on the move. Oh, you already know the heresy hunters in the chat getting content. They're like, oh, we're going to oh, use this. Yeah. They laugh. They joke. Oh, they yeah. they use demonic 666. Ooh, uh, the monsters. spirit of carp was yep. in there. They're using it on their their kids and their youth Dodge group. Dodge Dart is don't, demonic. Don't send your kids there. Yeah, they're, oh, they're, they're lurking right now. You already know it. So my little brother and I shared a room and we were, he would, Always have his room side clean. Oh, everything no. was always so perfect. And we would always get in fights with each other and like argue and everything. And so uh, one particular day we got in an argument and a fight. And my brother was very particular. He had his bed made perfectly. Oh, no. He had everything in, in perfect order. And so I decided, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get back at him. So this is around like lunchtime. So I go into the pantry and I grab a big sleeve of saltine crackers (laughs) and I take that and I munch it up, grab it, and I open up his covers and I just, just (laughs) put it all in there. (laughs) Close his covers and I wait patiently for the Lord. He heard my. You were always scheming, and bro. At at eight thirty nine o'clock when we go to bed, I'm just sitting under my covers, just going, "Oh God!" You please. something about you and pretending you're asleep. If Jared's pretending he's sleeping, he's up to no good. All of a sudden, he jumps in his bed, and all of a sudden, <laughs> what is this? And he just starts freaking out, and then like I, he runs and turns on the light, and he flips over his covers and sees all these saltine crackers, <laughs> and just goes berserk. Swinging for the fences, hitting me and everything. I'm screaming, Mom, Mom, <laughs> No wonder Mom. your family, you, no wonder you guys had unforgiveness. <laughs> yes, he brought that up. No wonder, <laughs> so, he brought that up in the, yeah. in the unforgiveness. <laughs> so, anyways, he started hitting me and everything. And he was really upset. Yeah, so don't judge me. I'm getting it off my chest. Get it off here. Oh. And your brother in the chat, we apologize. Yeah. So I, um, That's you. hilarious, dude. I did make him throw up one time. <laughs> So it was his 13th birthday you party. Casually, casually segue. <laughs> I didn't make him throw up as well. You remember that movie Goonies? Yeah. When he was I was like, scared to death of it as a kid. When Chunk was scared of onions to, and when Goonies. Chunk, they were putting the tomatoes in the blender and they're like, spell you the beans there. You know? I haven't seen it. I was so, so scared of it. Bro, it's so funny. We get to make a funny video about it. So, anyway, so my brother was 13. It's his 13th birthday party and I'm telling jokes and everybody's. <laughs> Everybody's eating pizza and laughing, and I'm just rolling. And then all of a sudden, my little brother's like, stop it. <laughs> stop it. 
he's holding his pizza in his mouth, and I'm just the punchlines are rolling <laughs> left and right. I mean, it's like a tsunami is hit, and you just can't stop. And he's finally like, "No, stop!" And his friends, <laughs> all his friends are around him, just laughing. Ah, ha, 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 and he's like, "Stop, stop!" <laughs> Dude. Throws up pepperoni pizza no. all over the place. And right after he throws up at his own birthday party, at his own birthday party, he starts throwing punches at me <laughs> again. I mean, just starts hitting me, and I'm like, "Dude, leave me alone!" I, I just, can't. I was just stand up comedy. I for think you. I'm gonna throw up. I feel like I'm about to be him. Oh, oh my cheeks! Oh, all right. So glad I'm on this live. Someone said, "No more." Yeah, Jared. Tell you guys stories. have any questions for Jared yeah, here you guys tonight? Got any questions like <laughs> someone I'll said, Jared tells stories and laughs until he cries, like my Sicilian grandpa used to. <laughs> If people met your dad, too, and saw how funny your dad was, oh. it would be even more hilarious. My dad is so funny. Like, he walks. Well, I'll invite him to a church when I'm guest speaking. He walks in like he knows everybody. <laughs> he sits. He walks by I and shakes people's dad. hands and goes, welcome <laughs> to church. Your dad welcome. is amazing. Welcome. He's hey, so I'm so glad you're here. I'm like, Dad, you're the guest, and you're welcoming people that have been born in this church. You know, <laughs> like, what are you doing, Dad? Hey. Was anybody else him. scared of the Goonies? Apparently, I was the only one that... That literally, as a kid, terrified me. That guy what was his name, Coach uh, Slav. <laughs> what was that his name? Yeah, the guy that was all deformed. Yes, Dude, I was like ter- I was terrified. Let me know in the chat if I was the only one. I was terrified Love, of the Goonies. Love chunk, <laughs> and I was terrified of ET. Oh my goodness, I'm oh, I'm scarred. Yeah, ET and onions. Is there apparently. a part where ET has you could see inside of him or his yes, heart or something? His, his that oh red that heart yeah, yeah oh it terrified me, dude. Dude, we're gonna start. Definitely the only one. No, there's no way I'm the only one. There has to be other people in the chat. <laughs> they want to know, do you play pickleball? Oh, yeah, of course he does. Oh, I love we, pickleball. We got, he got me into pickleball. He's the one that was like, come over mm-hmm. and try it. I went to his house, played it, and then that night I was in bed till like midnight <laughs> ordering nets and tape and court like, to set up in my like, driveway. Wait, hold on. I, I went full out. Night, like, Just I'm addicted. <laughs> yeah, I built, literally <laughs> built a court at my house the next day. Oh my gosh. Okay, so no one was scared? Okay, I guess I'm the only one. I'm scared of Onions, E.T., and the Goonies, and I play fake sports. Baby Ruth? Yeah, that's from uh, Goonies. Oh, man. Oh, Goonies was a great Do you play Frisbee golf? Not anymore. I forgot to put that thing behind your I played once. That's it. Yeah, one time. One time, that was enough for me. Jared has to get up early and go to the airport. What are you guys doing again? Are you... Yeah, we're flying for an FCA Bring it a little bit closer to your thing. Oh. FCA. Yeah, FCA trip. We're flying. Did somebody just say that? Who said that? Was that my wife? or Maybe your wife's in the chat. Oh, maybe Guys, she... make sure you're also... My mom said, yes, Jared and Isaiah play pickleball. Thanks, Mom. Yes, we do. We are obsessed. We Does played before. Any, any we questions? Came. Yeah, oh, any we... questions about prayer or anything funny? And guys, make sure you give as well. If you're not a monthly partner or you didn't donate, thank you for donating and giving. Yes, and I'm glad you. that we had. We hit some type of thing because we were at 2,400 viewers, went to 3,000, yeah, and then we went back that. to... And then everyone got kicked out because of the network. Also, I'm going to be soon transitioning off of Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, I'm going to give you like a month or two warning. Maybe 2024, we stop Facebook. I'm going to be getting off of Facebook because here's the thing. If they're going to keep restricting my account, if they're going to keep censoring me, keep flagging me, not putting my view, my videos out to my followers, then why am I going to keep giving them content for their Ooh, platform? So on. the way that we're going to uh, go against that is we're not going to stream there. We're going to boycott Facebook. We will still be posting shorts, all of our stuff, but we won't be posting our streams on Facebook because I'm giving my life to this content, to preaching you guys, teaching you guys, bringing the podcast, and I'm not going to be giving them content when they're going to keep restricting my account. Everything I post gets restricted and all that. So if you're on Facebook, we're going to be on YouTube only soon. Not yet. We'll give you guys a warning, but we're going to be soon transitioning. Actually, going forward, these studio podcasts will only be on YouTube. That's for sure, because I can't stand how they don't let us do 4K and they do all that. So we're going to be going 4K from this studio onto YouTube only and going forward. And then also, just so you guys know, we will be soon transitioning off of Facebook Live period, which is sad. It feels bad because I started on Facebook That's Live right, you did. 2020. I went Facebook Live mm-hmm. till October until my brother's like, you need to go on YouTube, and then my whole life changed. But yeah, Facebook is is an absolute joke. So 
Yes, for all of you boomers, I love you guys FCA out there. FCA is Fellowship of Christian Switch Athletes, over. yes. Yeah, Jared is a regional, what was your, what's your title, regional director? Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, what is your actual title for FCA? I don't want to say. Why is it? <laughs> it sounds too presidential. Yeah, like, let's hear it. Come on, bro. <laughs> it's regional vice president of the Pacific West region. Oh, regional vice president to the assistant manager of the <laughs> West Coast right re region. Hey, everybody goes, I just tell three. people I'm just the director. Of Ruby, FCA. Ruby yes. edition. Yes. You're like the ones when they say if you have a medallion ruby gold diamond plus you have four hundred thousand miles yeah come up and you're the guy that goes up in the first oh, one. Oh mercy what other movie gremlins oh yeah gremlins was gremlins oh, yeah. was scary which again these movies i want to recommend you giving your little kids these movies by the way guys but yeah gremlins was scary as well but we weren't allowed to watch gremlins we weren't yeah we weren't allowed to watch that but we did watch it at our cousins a few times snuck it and <laughs> freaked me out awesome live thank you We've been live for, we'll hit two hours and then we're going to get off, guys. So we're at hour and 53 minutes. Poor Jared, he has to get up super early to go to the airport. I was like, oh, we're only going to go an hour, which don't believe me next time I say I, that. I never do. Remind me, Nico, the camera, it keeps going super bright. So mine only. Remind me after. Um, FCA was at my son's school. Listen. That's so cool. If you have kids in school that you want them to hear the gospel, then you should love it, FCA. Because yes. they're bringing the gospel to kids in school. And maybe you're like, oh, I don't care about FCA because you don't have kids. But if you have kids in school, especially ones that are doing sports, they're bringing the gospel to secular schools and public schools. Yeah. And what are some of the stuff like you guys are doing? At yeah. Schools? So like just right now, this is the best start to a school year we've ever had. We've already ha we already had over a thousand decisions to follow Christ. Wow. And it's still November, and we we give kids free Bibles. FCA uh, prints a Bible. Uh, it's got devotionals built into it. We get them Amazing. connected to local youth pastors in. Um, churches. So every FCA huddle that we start, there's also a local church representative there helping us lead, helping disciple kids, getting them plugged into youth groups. We do uh, we do character coaching for sports teams. We also have summer camps that we do. We have awesome. them that are just like small camps for elementary age kids to high school camps. We have one that's coming up next year at William Jessup University. If you go to Pacific West FCA, just Google that. You'll get more information. Yeah, about and FCA. what does FCA stand for? Those are asking. Yeah, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Oh, and Fellowship so of Christian Athletes. It's been around since 1954. We're almost 70 years old as a ministry, and it all started with a vision of why do sports players only use their influence to endorse cars or cologne or cigarettes? Wow. Why can't they use their influence to talk about the gospel in Jesus Christ? That's so awesome. That's when athletes started on you know getting interviewed talking about their faith before that nobody ever did that they always kept it private but fca was started to allow the influence of athletes and coaches to share their that's faith. amazing and jared and his wife just started a youtube channel which is in the description there's yes. 1500 of you watching if you guys all went right now and subscribed that would be amazing that'd be awesome so yes. if you're on the replay if you're watching live he shared some funny stories with us. Go give him a subscribe. And he's funny in his videos as well. But he not just funny, but he has really good content. Him and his wife teaching on family and dating and marriage and a bunch of other topics. So go check out his channel. It's brand new. It's in the description. And that would help us him out tremendously. And yeah, me too. Absolutely. You know, he's a good friend of mine. If you guys want to subscribe. Thank you, Anonymous, for the donations at God Bless the Ministry. Thank you guys for giving on the website. For some reason, Nico took the giving code down. I guess he doesn't want us to keep going. He wants, you know, <laughs> he wants us to lose this studio. He doesn't want to get paid. No, it's all good. Oh, he wants. Okay, I see. Okay. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Um, so yeah, you guys can give there. That helps us out tremendously. We really, really appreciate that. Everybody Thanks, wants Janelle. to see you and Nico on stream together. Oh, that would be hilarious. Gosh. It would be nothing but laughter. Nico yeah. wouldn't be able to talk. He'd be on the ground the whole time. <laughs> yeah, it would. We be do a, need. Yeah. We do need a laugh cam. We for sure do. We have a mic over there. Nico acts like it's not plugged in, but he does have a mic over there. But yeah, we need to do more more types of streams and stuff like that. I want to use the studio more. It's sad that we don't use it as much as we should, but we, we're going to work on that in 2024. We're going to use the studio more. It's hard because... Why are you laughing? <laughs> See, he scares me with his laugh, dude. He just randomly don't even said anything. I'm like, mine's hard. We don't use the studio. Nico breaks down laughter. In 2024, we're going to use... Oh, the slogan? Yeah, because uh, I've done Zoom podcast for so long it's hard now to go to bringing out guests because they have to be here for days it's play for flights pay for everything and then i had to pick up at the airport it's like a whole process to bring in guests yep. when i'm used to being like oh i'll call you at 5 55 on zoom you know what i mean yeah it's, it's hard to go back to convenient doing in person and this sounds like bad to say but obviously we're making videos so people view them like everyone cares about views you don't want to make a video where no one views it there's no point in making it so the views are not any more when we do in person than when we do call-in shows so yeah that's why 
We don't use the studio as much. It's a lot of work. All right, guys, we're going to go for like two more minutes and then we'll put our ending screen on and I'll let Jared get out of here because he has to wake up very early, even though he wakes up early every day. I wake up early every morning. Everybody's so. typing FCA links. Yeah, you can find out more there. Make sure you sub down below. Anything else, guys, you have? Oh, let me announce this. I'll be in Texas on Saturday. Saturday. I don't know what to say about it. We have, I think, I think 10,000 people registered. So I don't know if we can invite anybody now. Here's what I'm going to say about it. Nico's a Wilson from the old... That's what Jared just said. I said that. Nico driving. is Wilson from the Home Improvement. Jared literally told Nico today, "You're Wilson from Home Improvement." Where I you was can't, like, "We should have a yeah. just like right here from like just yes, his eyeballs you can't showing see his face. and everything." <laughs> can't see him. Nico that knows be... he could be on the show at any moment. All you ask him when is he going to be on? He could be on. Excuse me, as I choke here, at any time. Okay, here's what I'm going to say about Texas. Texas is sold out. It's free, but all the tickets are sold out, and they're free tickets. But I'm just letting you know there's no room. We have an 8,000-seat venue at the Toyota Center. It's full. So the person running the event said, we don't know what we're going to do, and here's the deal. If you're local, like not far, and you haven't registered, and you're local, drive out to the event this Saturday. The info's on my website, and see if you can get in because we're going to try to get everybody in. I don't okay. know if we will. If you live far away and you're planning to fly in and you don't have a ticket, don't buy a flight and don't fly in because you might not get in. So that's what I'm going to say. Local Texas people, come on out. But if you're flying in and you don't have a registered ticket, then don't come. If you already bought your hotel and ticket and you're not registered, just come and tell them at the door, like, I've already bought a flight in a hotel and I'm from Isaiah Stream. Go talk to Isaiah. Well, that's going to be bad because I'm going to have like a thousand people saying that. But I'll try to make something happen. But yeah, um, that's that, okay? Uh, yeah, the mods are going to get the trolls. By the way, guys, when you come in as a troll, being like, this guy's a false teacher, the mods enjoy banning you. They oh, enjoy yeah. sending you to the block party. They do. So it. if you want to come in and say, false teacher this, don't waste your time. You're going to last a second, and then the mods are going to get pleasure out of kicking you back to the cave you crawled out of. So just, if you're going to come troll, this is not the right channel to troll, because our mods are, if Nico doesn't get you instantly... I have like 10 mods waiting to ban people. They, they have the ban hammer ready. They're going to send you right to the block party. Once you go to the block party, you never come out of it. You never come back. So at the block party, it's, it's fun if you're a heresy hunter, but it's not fun if you want to be a part of the stream. So go back to the cave. Um, the best part about YouTube is, I don't know if you know this, when you ban someone on YouTube, they don't know they've been banned and they keep typing, thinking everyone sees it and no one can see it. Did you know that? Yeah, it's so crazy. So wow. when, like this guy we just banned right now, He's going to be in here spamming false teacher, like spending all his time and energy and passion saying I'm false, but he doesn't realize no one can see his comment, only him. So it's like, it's, yeah. I know that because I've been banned before. So I'm like, <laughs> I know, I know, you know. Um, oh, okay. We've been live two hours. We love you guys. We appreciate you guys. Yes. If you want to get the prayer segment, rewind. We hang out after every stream and engage with you guys for 30 to 40 minutes. And that's that. Go rewind. Tonight has been an amazing stream. Do we have an ending screen, Nico? Uh, there's a bird there. <laughs> I don't think we do. Do we? Do we fix it? I think we fixed it. What's the bird's name? Carl. That's Carl, Carl the bird. Carl the dove. They think he's a pigeon, but he's been born again into a dove. Oh. He's been, yeah, you can try it. He's a new creation. Oh, look. Christ. There it is. And I think we're... Are we muted? Okay. We love you guys. We appreciate you guys. Oh, let's stretch. It's it's sweatshirt season. And those of you asking, this is Volcom. Whoever's like, what brand is that? Um, yeah. I, and this is... From Ross. So I don't know what <laughs> there you is go. <laughs> I got it is sweater Ross. season. Praise the Lord. Well, actually, I like the summer way better. But we love you guys. We appreciate you guys. Thanks yes. for being here. It's been amazing. We could probably go five hours. I also want to do, coming soon, a, uh, a prayer stream every morning for a week. So we'll do seven days of prayer every morning soon. i got to figure that out. But, yeah, we're thinking about it. We're praying about it. Love you guys. We're praying about a we prayer fun. stream. Yeah, we're praying. <laughs> We're praying about a prayer stream. Yes. That's how you know you're super spiritual. We're praying if the Lord wants us to do a prayer stream. Yeah, that's your, that's, yeah, I need to go pray right now. But yeah, that'll be daily. So we love you guys. We appreciate you guys. Yes. Thanks for being here. We'll see, see you guys, guys later. Bye. Go sub to Jared right now. Go, right now. Go, go sub. Go sub to Jared's channel right there in the do, comments, do right it, there. Do